I'm San Antonio Mayor Ron Nuremberg. I am a Trinity University alum, and I want you to know about my passion for these two vibrant communities. My alma mater is now a nationally recognized liberal arts university, offering fully integrated arts, humanities, STEM, and professional programs. Grounded in the liberal arts, Trinity graduates students who think critically, act meaningfully, and contribute confidently throughout their careers. As for San Antonio, Trinity is an oasis in the heart of a city that serves as a cultural bridge to the Americas. We are a diverse community that values inclusion and welcomes intellectual curiosity and spirited debate. We're a city that values convention and welcomes new ideas. Great things are happening at Trinity University in San Antonio and through all our connections to our multicultural world. Join me in being part of this exciting moment. After a cold and rainy first round last week, the football gods are certainly smiling upon Texas today. Welcome to the beautiful campus of Trinity University in the heart of San Antonio. The University of Mary Hardin Baylor Crusaders are in town to face the Trinity University Tigers. It's the second round of the NCAA playoffs live on Tiger Network. I'm Brian Yenselson and I'm joined by Luke Terry. Luke, we had so much fun hosting a playoff game for the first time since 2011 that we decided let's do it again. It was such a spectacular game for the first time in over 10 years here in San Antonio in the playoffs. A 14-7 to victory for Trinity, a game that came right down to the wire, but they pulled it off, clinching the game with an interception as time clicked off the clock. But we might have an even better one in store for us here today as the Crusaders make the journey down I-35, a rematch of last year's first round game, which was an absolute war in the trenches. It was a good one up in Belton. The Tigers going up the reverse way on I-35 and giving the Crusaders a very tough fight. UMHB going on to win the national championship and really cruise their way through the playoffs after they defeated Trinity. In fact, their point differential throughout the playoffs was an average of 24 points. They even won by 33 in the championship. But their win over Trinity, just a 10-point victory. So these Tigers really gave them all they could handle. Yeah, and it was just a matter of the way that these two teams matched up last year. This is a Mary Harden-Baylor team that has great, great size up front. They want to establish the run. But Trinity, while they gave up over 100 yards in the run game, did enough to slow them down in that category on the back end. A couple of cornerbacks, Malik Ross and Trey King, who return this year, were fantastic at stopping the weapons on the outside for the Crusaders. A couple of players that are going to need to get going for this Mary Harden Baylor team if they want to win more easily than they did last year. But you'll see the numbers that these guys have put up. A couple of guys that were dominant last year, as we mentioned. Trey King with an interception in that game. He has three this year. But Malik Ross on the other side has broken up 10 passes, four more than his mate in the secondary. Two guys that have been just absolutely extraordinary. But you think about how big these guys are, Brian. Trey King standing in there at about 5'10", Malik Ross at 5'8", who matches up pretty well with K.J. Miller for Mary Harden Baylor. But on the other side, Brandon Jordan is an absolute matchup nightmare for any secondary. A wide receiver that comes in at 6'6". You see him there on the right, strutting out there. A guy that can go up and win and jump balls, and he has a little bit of different 
season this year, only 40 receptions for 537 yards, but that's coming off a campaign in which he became only the third crusader in program history to log a 1,000-yard receiving season. So two huge threats on the outside, and the Tiger defense on the secondary certainly can have the work cut out for him here today. Some real weapons to work with for Coach Larry Harmon in his first year as head coach for the University of Mary Hardin-Baylor, taking over for the legendary Pete Fredenberg. And you saw on your screen 40 receptions and 11 touchdowns for Jordan. That means 25% of his catches are for touchdowns. So when the crew get down in the red zone, they like to go to him. And it'll be a tough task for King and Ross. But we saw that they were up to the challenge a year ago, and they've been up to the challenge all year long especially considering how strong of a rush defense Trinity has had all year. Opponents have had to go to the air. They've had no other choice, so they've been tested a little bit more. And as we've talked with Coach Jeremy Urban all year long, he's been impressed with how they've responded and reacted to being tested on the outside just a little bit more. I think they get forgotten about in some capacity. You mentioned this run defense. It's a run defense that ranks number five in NCAA Division Three coming into this week, even after a playoff matchup last weekend against Harden Simmons, who put the ball on the ground in the hands of their running backs a lot. It's a defense that has the number five scoring average in the nation. So you forget about those guys in the back end because they don't get tested as much. They don't have as many opportunities. But you mention when they have been tested, they've been great. But you see the guys on your screen here. A couple of linebackers in Caleb Harmel and Ezra Gore and Mac Douglas, who's really come into his own, playing on that defensive line this year. A true senior in his first year starting. You see the numbers, 52 tackles, 7.5 tackles for loss, 3.5 sacks on the year. And it's a defensive line that's taken a different approach. So it's going to be interesting to see how these teams match up. Last year, a defense that was really set on stopping the run. And while Trinity does that equally as well this year, they've added a lot of speed to that unit, trying to get up the field, get to the quarterback, and beat those interior defensive linemen with some more speed and quickness. I think that they've done a really good job of it all year. And one thing that it's allowed this defense is for guys like Caleb Harmel on the far left and Ezra Gore on the far right, some guys that play in that linebacker core to stay clean, to get up the field when they bring extra pressure, and just have huge impacts using their speed. Yeah, the linebacker trio has certainly come up huge. We don't know yet about all American selections, but we do know about all conference selections. And those three that you saw on your screen all receiving honors from the Southern Athletic Association. Caleb Harmel, a first-team member, Mac Douglas and Ezra Gore on the second team. But those are three of the staples of the Trinity defense that has seen some rotation, seen some changes, especially on the defensive line. But those linebackers have remained steady, remained healthy, and they figure to play a big part in the game today. You're getting a look still live thanks to this incredible drone coverage that we have since it's such a beautiful day. It's like we had to earn our way here weather-wise, not just football-wise, to be here after that cold and rainy one last week. Yeah, and it was a miserable, miserable game here in San Antonio that really impacted the type of football that was played. The first half was not the brand of football we were used to seeing from Trinity, but things got a little bit better in the second. They came out, scored 14 points, took the lead, and ultimately got the win. But what a performance from Mary Harden Baylor last week in Belton, opening the playoff in commanding fashion with a 54 to nothing win over what is a really good top 25 Huntington program. Yeah, they just completely blew them out of the water. A couple of early turnovers in that one, and the Crusaders were off and running. Never really looked back, never faced much of a challenge. But that could also be interesting to keep an eye on throughout the game if this is a close one. UMHB has not been in a ton of close games as of late. The closest games they were in were early in the season as Mary Harden Baylor fell to Wisconsin Whitewater. And what a game that was. Everyone around Division Three was watching that one. The Crusaders were down at the one, about to score, about to put that game away. Instead, the Warhawks stopped them and then drove all the way down 99 yards to go up with just a few seconds left. But UMHB responded. They said, OK, we lost non-conference. Let's roll right through the ASC, earn the automatic bid once again. And here they are, ready to face the Trinity Tigers, the captains at midfield. 
We see Tucker Horn, Austin Burtness, Caleb Harmel, and Harris Good for the Trinity Tigers. And the crowd really starting to fill in as well. People making the drive down from Belton. Maybe not right there, that one specific patch of bleachers you see right now, but the rest of the UMHB side is full. And for Trinity, with half the roster not on the field, they will be making some noise as well from the bleachers. And you are sure to hear the cowbells, some horns as well. And all this considering students are still not back yet from Thanksgiving break. Yeah, just an unfortunate timing predicament that the NCAA runs into. Would certainly love to have more people on campus this afternoon in San Antonio, but it is a good crowd, much better than what we had considering the weather last weekend. And it looks like Mary Harden Baylor won the toss but opted to defer. So Trinity will come out with the offense to lead this one. Tucker Horn will come in. He's been spectacular again this year. Numbers a little bit down, but I don't think they're indicative of the way he's played this year. He's been absolutely phenomenal. He's captained this offense. He makes great decisions at the line of scrimmage, and I think he's going to need to do the same here today as we see the two quarterbacks on the screen. Really, really similar numbers. A little bit better for Kyle King in regards to yards and touchdown to interception ratio. But Tucker Horn really going to need to control this game at the line of scrimmage. I expect Mary Harden Baylor to bring some pressure, bring some added guys from that box. They have a great linebacker core, and I would be shocked if they didn't try and hit some gaps early on in this game to disrupt Tucker Horn and get him out of his rhythm. The Crusaders are in formation and ready to go. Anthony Avila will be in charge of the kickoff. Legend Grigsby and Justin Carmouche are back to receive it. And that is important to note that there is no B.J. Stewart back there. He is suited up. We'll see how much he plays, but B.J. Stewart averaging over 30 yards per kickoff return, second in the nation. Not back there to start things off, and the wind already, you see, playing a factor, knocking the ball off the tee. And the wind the last couple of weeks has blown true north to south, which means end zone to end zone, but instead blowing east to west here in San Antonio this afternoon as that one's taken and will be returned by Justin Carmouche, who has a hole up the middle. And he's down the right side with blockers ahead of him across the 50. Justin Carmouche showing that the Tigers have more than just B.J. Stewart to start things off. That's one way to get things rolling. And special teams sure to play a key here. And you get an excellent over-the-head look. Justin Carmouche using his blocks, going to the right, and giving Tucker Horn an excellent place to start this drive. Officials backing it up. Just a little bit saying he got knocked out at the 38. And that is where the Trinity University Tigers will start things off. Ranked fifth in the nation, 11-0. And they'll look to take down the defending national champions on their home turf here. First play is a Winston Hutchison run. And Hutchison moves forward for about a yard. Second and nine. And right off the bat, I'll notice that Mary Harden Baylor comes out in a defensive front. Very similar to what Trinity saw against Harden Simmons last week. That middle linebacker position is walked up about a yard off the ball directly over the center. So going to make it difficult on this Tiger offensive line, especially in the run game. And it's certainly an aspect where Trinity struggled last year in the matchup between these two. They netted less than 30 yards on the ground, but this afternoon they'll have a trio of running backs working instead of just one that they had last year. Horn looks over the middle, and Ryan Merrifield gets going early. He makes a catch and ends up right around the marker. Looks like he'll be just a bit short, but it'll bring down a third and inches. And Ryan Merrifield getting involved a lot earlier than a week ago. He was receptionless in the first half, but boy, did he wake up. He had six receptions for 110 yards, and that game-winning touchdown We'll see what the Tigers do here on the UMHB 29. Cole Monego at the bottom of your screen. Merrifield at the top with Hutchison in the backfield. Horn takes it, hands it off to Hutchison. Hutchison kind of dives down a little bit, and he is met with resistance by the Crusaders. 
Trey Bellew Witcher among those in goal to stop Hutchison. They drive him back a little bit, and it'll be fourth and two in the Tiger offense looking to stay out. Yeah, it'll be interesting to follow all afternoon long what these two teams opt to do when they're in this area of the field. Are they going to kick field goals? Or are they going to go for it when they have fourth and shorts like the Trinity Tigers do right here? So far, we've seen two runs, and they've netted about zero yards. So expect the Tigers to put this one in the air. They do horn, looking right. Hutchison slips out of his hands, and that's going to be a fourth down stop for UMHB. Great field position provided by the Justin Carmouche kickoff return is wasted. And the Crusaders will now take over on offense, led by quarterback Kyle King. We yeah. saw those running back passes so much last week, Luke, going to what has been a bread and butter, but just not quite working. And that time it looked like Mary Harden Baylor had it sniffed out. A couple of players from that middle of the field were flowing in that direction. I'm sure Winston Hutchison was aware of that. Was trying to get up field to gain enough yardage for the first down, but he hadn't secured the catch yet. So a real unfortunate break for the Tigers right there. And on the other side, Afonso Thomas is going to get the first carry of the game. And he'll stumble forward for about two yards, but a lot of resistance very early on from this Trinity defensive front. And you mentioned there's been a lot of turnover on this side of the ball, especially in that group of defensive linemen. But one of the guys that we've seen really come on late in the year, big number 94, Amir Mustafa, who stands in at six foot one, just about 330 pounds. So he's going to be a handful in the middle. We have to see if Thomas can use his speed to try and get around the edge. Agumaru trying to get around the edge, but great protection. Plenty of time to throw, but that's going to be incomplete. Quinn McDermott getting there late and forcing the ball out of the hands of K.J. Miller. It'll bring up a third and eight for the Crusaders. Yeah, and a pretty clean pocket right here for Kyle King, but he opts to just continue dropping back right there. Makes that a much longer throw. KJ Miller has to come back much further to the ball, but as you mentioned, a good job by Quinn McDermott continuing to drive through, ultimately breaking that pass up. So early on, a third and long for this Crusader offense. We saw a couple of Tigers run off the field that included Mustafa and Good. So I think Trinity opting with some more speed here. And around the edge quickly is a couple of players. But King somehow finding a way to dump that one off. But Thomas will have nowhere to go. A good heads-up play by King to avoid the sack. But this Trinity defense early on, on a third down, showing off the speed that they have. They just swarm to the ball. If it's not one, it's two, it's three. This Trinity defense, and you saw the linebackers on full display, Harmel, Gunrin, and Gore. Chasing that ball, and now King, in his typical punting position as well, can do more than just throw the ball. Will be punting it to the B.J. Stewart. Can he get it? B.J. Stewart chases it down, picks it up, heads to his left, dragged down, but not to the turf until he is down at the 25. So a nice job by the Crusaders to get the speedy Stewart. Yeah, not entirely sure who that was on the tackle right there. So you're going to see King with a low line drive, not much of a spiral on it. And I think in a game like this where both sides have really dangerous returners, that punt is going to be very, very dangerous. You don't want to outkick your coverage. It was a nice drive. I think it was number three right there for the Crusaders. That's Adams who made the tackle grab just enough of Stuart to slow him up, spin him around, and ultimately the rest of the squad swarmed there for the tackle. Trinity will start their second drive of the afternoon at their own 25-yard line. Hand off to Justin Carmouche, and Carmouche has nowhere to go. Sante Parker Jr., the defensive player of the year in the American Southwest Conference, all over Carmouche. Loss of about three. And the first couple of plays on that first possession for Trinity saw some runs up the gut. This offensive line didn't get great push. Netted zero yards. They opted to try and use some speed, get outside the tackles, but Sante Parker 
with great speed and great strength of his own, was too quick up the field on that left side and just absolutely destroyed that play. Merrifield across the middle again. He's liking that spot at the center of the turf. He gains about halfway what the Tigers needed and makes this a third down and much more manageable. Talking to Coach Jeremy Irvin ahead of this matchup, asking him what changed for Ryan Merrifield that allowed him to succeed in the second half after no receptions in the first half, then six in the second. He said it was really a matter of the weather showing that they could throw the ball. They could go back to their game plan. They thought it would be raining all game. But after coming out of the locker room, they felt more confident in going to Merrifield. And with this beautiful day today, not wasting any time getting it to number 13. On third down, Horn sets up to pass, fires it, and incomplete. The intended receiver was Kovacevic. But Durand Hill, the sophomore from Austin, Texas, able to bat the ball away. Pre-snap, we saw B.J. Stewart motion across the field from that near side to the far side, but no one went with him. So Tucker Horn able to identify the zone right there. All the routes were going right into the middle of the field, and those linebackers, as we already mentioned, for Mary Harden Baylor have been fantastic all season long in coverage of the tight end right there. Did a really good job. We're going to see another low line drive here with a very, very favorable bounce for Eli Gaiman. It's a good job from the Mary Harden Baylor Crusader returners back there, opting not to field that one. Just an unfortunate bounce that went against them as that one rolled all the way back inside their 20 and it'll be downed at the 19 yard line. So the Crusaders will take over at their own 19 and so far we are seeing what it might look like. It is really strength against strength, an explosive Mary Harden Baylor offense against a stout Trinity defense. Play clock down to nine as King takes a look at the defense. Decides to hand it off, waiting patiently, and there is a gun run for the tackle. The handoff to Kenneth Cormier, the junior from Watuga, Texas. And as that play comes to an end, an injured Tiger on the turf. We'll take a quick break on Tiger Network as the trainers tend to Trinity. Great to see number 94, Amir Mustafa, walking off confidently. We hope that is a good sign. Amir Mustafa, the senior from Houston, Texas, one of the most animated Tigers out there. He's the conductor of the postgame alma mater. Such a fun guy to be around and hope that he is okay. And as we're back on Tiger Network, a second and seven for Kyle King and the Crusaders, a low snap handoff to Cormier. Harris Good trying to track him down. Brandon Jordan had a pretty nice hold on to Trey King. And it's going to be enough yardage for a UMHB first down. Yeah, and that's one of the advantages of having a wide receiver on the edge like Brandon Jordan, who has that 6'6 frame. Not only a threat down the field as a jump ball receiver, but wins matchups in the blocking game like a tight end would. 
Right now at the bottom of your screen, he's matched up against Trey King. So a 6-6 versus 5-10 matchup down there. And we'll see as Kyle King opts to go in the air this time. Finds KJ Miller in a little bit of a zone in that defense. Just enough space to scoot out to the 40-yard line for another first down. It's actually Jamal Hamilton there on the reception. Very similar numbers, one and seven. But Hamilton gets involved in the offense. Senior from Dallas, Texas. And the Crusaders with a couple of first downs, something they're very good at. Very mechanic offense. A handoff here to Cormier. Breaks through the hole. Tiger defense looked like it was there initially. Instead, it's a positive gain for Cormier. And you can see the junior, what he can do, the first team all-conference member on just six attempts a week ago against Huntingdon had 36 yards, but guess what? Also had two touchdowns on those six carries. So he is very productive and he is showing up well today in the first quarter. Second and four, under eight. Another handoff to Cormier. This time he's backed up, tries to wait, and he is wrapped up by Harris Good and James Ogunrin. And it was some good early penetration by those interior defensive linemen. Trinity playing with just a front of three defensive linemen this afternoon. It's what they've opted to do all season. And to combat that on this drive, not only have they brought in Cormier, who is the bigger back, but they've tried to get him running outside the tackles, pick up a little speed, and then when he's out there in space against these defensive backs and linebackers, allow him to break some tackles. Fake to him, and the pass is off, intended for Hamilton. <laughs> But the connection was not there, and it'll be a fourth down and four for the Crusaders. The punting unit looks to be coming on the field. King trying to get rid of it in a hurry. Tiger defense ready for it, and B.J. Stewart will go back to receive. As Kyle King, the senior from Milano, Texas, has become so well known for his quarterback prowess, but don't forget that he was a punter at Howard Payne that actually got selected to the all ASC team as a punter. So he has some skill back here. And will he send it to Stewart? This one with a little bit more hang time, but still hard for Stewart to get to and it heads out of bounds. Yeah, it looked like the wind really picking up here in San Antonio affected that one. As we mentioned, it's blowing from west to east. So that's from the near side of the field to the far side of the field where that one was driven out. But Mary Harden Baylor on that possession, even though it didn't result in points, did a good job picking up a couple of first downs, getting it right around their own 45 with a good attempt, good opportunity there to try and flip the field. And now Trinity will start with their worst field position of the day inside the 20 at their own 15. Manego called into motion. It'll be a handoff to Carmouche, looks to go left, but there is no room to run. Justin Carmouche. Has had a couple of carries now, but not much working. And this Crusaders defense is absolutely loading up the box right now. Those cornerbacks are split out wide. The safeties are playing about the average depth of 12 yards or so, but those linebackers are walked up. They're playing right off of the edge of those defensive ends. That Mike linebacker still playing around a couple of yards off that center. Horn with five wide, looking to pass. That ball tipped and nearly intercepted. Lucky break for Tucker Horn there. It was Omari Frazier who nearly came up with it. Let's see who batted it. And you saw getting his hands up right there. Tristan Green, the junior from Gladewater, Texas. Last week, Tucker Horn throwing an interception that was tipped just like that. Has thrown nine interceptions this year. And he has a third down and 10 from his own 15, joined by legend Grigsby. Calls number one into motion, Stewart off and running. Where does Horn go? He goes to the running back, the screen attempt, but it's not there. The UMHB defense all over the running game and the short passing game that Trinity is trying to establish and they'll force Eli Gaiman to come out to punt. Again, we saw B.J. Stewart go in motion pre-snap to that short side of the field. That time around, we saw one of those linebackers, I believe it was Durand Hill, 
from his middle linebacker position, move over with Stort. So man offense had one-on-one -on -one blocking on that side of the field, but just too much speed from that defensive line of Mary Harden Baylor. And this time they will have an opportunity to return a punt. Trying to wrap him up, can't do it. And he gets well into Trinity territory. Tigers had him wrapped up. Cannon Starkey thought he had him down. But you talked about it, Luke. Both of these teams with very dangerous returners. And this time UMHB not getting the ball in the hands of what has been the most dangerous returner in college football over the last few years. But it's actually Matthew Jackson, the sophomore from Dallas, that got that one. And now the Crusaders will start on Trinity's 33. They were stopped on a couple after a couple of first downs on the last drive. Jordan and Miller at the bottom of your screen. King going the opposite direction. Trey King with some good defense there. Keeps the ball away from Jerry Day Jr. And even Jerry Day has great size on the outside for this Mary Harden Baylor team, standing in at six foot two, still with the advantage over the shorter Trey King, but King at that cornerback position doing a nice job of trying to force Day to the outside, really closes the gap between the re receiver and that boundary. So Kyle King not with a huge window to drop that one in towards the sideline. Day will need to do a better job trying to win on the outside, or trying to win on the inside, excuse me, to leave that cushion. Going right back to Day, trying a little bubble screen. Tigers stop it after a gain of about four. Mac Douglas there on the outside. It'll bring down actually what's a third and seven. As King trying to utilize the block from Miller and Douglas stepping off of the defensive line, ready for it. And just great recognition from Douglas right there. Gets there in a hurry to make a sound tackle in the open field. If he's not there on time trying to make an arm tackle instead, they might have a lot of room because it was a nice block against Trey King out there. Thomas went into motion to block, passes off and caught for a first down. Jamal Hamilton is the man for King. I think King showing his experience right there, hanging in the pocket on a third down, even though he had multiple Tigers bearing down on him. Delivers a strike over the middle after that linebacker as Gore comes, leaving that area of the field a little bit thin, and he just picks out his man. Hand off to Thomas. Gets through the middle for a positive gain of a couple. Alfonso Thomas. The senior from Ben Wheeler, Texas. First team all ASC, Coach Larry Harmon saying he has incredible breakaway speed, can turn what looks like a two yard run into a 70 yard touchdown. And he is the running back of choice on this second and eight. Clock down to four minutes in the first quarter. Still knotted up at zero, but UMHB driving in the Trinity red zone. It's a fake to Thomas King over the middle. And making the catch for the touchdown is K.J. Miller. UMHB strikes first off the back of their senior wide receiver. And a year ago, it took about 55 minutes for either of these teams to find the end zone. That time, just a perfect delivery from Kyle King to K.J. Miller, who demonstrates really, really strong hands. It was Quinn McDermott bearing down from the safety position, trying to come in over the top and I think pick this one off. Certainly has an opportunity to break it up. Just there, a fraction of a second too late. And K.J. Miller pulls that one into his body and ultimately finds the end zone. As so we mentioned, special teams going to play a huge factor in this game. Mary Harden Baylor Offense did a good job a couple of possessions ago to pick up a couple of first downs, flip the field. The defense did their job creating that three and out, and then a nice return, put the ball inside Trinity's 40, and this offense did the rest with a really short field to work with. Miller does a little bit of everything. He was the special teams player of the year in the conference, but he has taken over that wide receiver spot. 
and he has been such a steady presence for the Crusaders over the last four years. With that touchdown now reaching 11 on the year, tying Brandon Jordan for the most on the team. Anthony Avila was able to make the extra point, and now he's ready for the kickoff. Anthony Avila kicking off for the crew. It is Carmouche and Grigsby once again back to receive this kickoff. And it is off from Avila. And headed to Carmouche again, has to back up into his own end zone, takes it still. Nice cut to the left, and he has some room to work. Gets by the kicker, Avila, and he gets to midfield. Boy, what a cut by Justin Carmouche, making the Crusaders look silly on the kick return. And I was questioning that decision to bring that one out as he backed up all the way into the end zone to receive it. You're going to see this one takes a long time to develop, and coming down that left edge are a couple of Crusaders unblocked, but you mentioned an absolutely stellar move from Carmouche. Puts that UMHB coverage man on the ground. He's able to bring that one out to almost the 50-yard line. So another great starting field position set up, set up by Justin Carmouche. And Trinity's going to have to do something to keep this defense honest. Tucker Horn drops back the pass, and he's going to get sacked right there. It's going to be a loss of about 15 yards as Horn turned around. Was trying to get out of trouble right there, but I think against a defense like this, you have to do everything that you can to get rid of the ball quickly. Can't afford to go backwards and get set up in situations like this when you're in a second and 25 situation. The sack was by big Tristan Green, number 54. And he heads off, but not before forcing a second and 23. Now what can Trinity do to trim into this down and distance? Horn three for six, just 18 yards. Hasn't really gotten going yet. Goes to his receiver, BJ Stewart. Modest gain to the 40. Will still be third and very long, third and 18. And that's what this offense is going to need to do this afternoon. You're going to have to just take what they're given. In situations where you're in first and 10, second and 10, a five-yard pickup like that is going to be more than enough. You'll have a couple of opportunities in a medium distance, but you just absolutely cannot afford to go backwards. You can afford to get stopped for no gain. But right here, it's going to be really difficult. And third and about 20, that one's going to fall incomplete as Horn looks to Legend Grigsby over the middle, and they'll punt the ball away again. You predicted pressure, Luke, at the top of the game. And while that was the first time Tucker Horn has really gone down on that drive off the sack, he hasn't really looked very comfortable back there. Hasn't had a ton of time to work with and look for his receivers. All his completions have been pretty short. Recall those two to Ryan Merrifield right in the middle of the field. And then that last one to Stewart, also a short gain. So Gaiman with the punt, avoids Miller. Again, can't wrap up Jackson until the 35. But a couple punts in a row from Eli Gaiman that are just not what the Tigers need. The first one, a couple of possessions ago, he kicks line of scrimmage is around the 15 yard line. I wanna say that Miller excuse me, not Miller on that last return a couple of possessions ago, would have been Jackson, caught it in Trinity territory. So not a very deep punt. That one, really the same story, a much nicer spiral, but a low line drive. And even though it didn't travel very far, about 30 yards from the line of scrimmage, it still managed to outkick the coverage and looked like Miller had another nice opportunity Going today, and he had a step, but the pass just beyond him. Jerry Day Jr. dealing with Malik Ross there on the top of your screen. So Day has been a heavy target so far, as has Miller with the touchdown. Have not heard of Brandon Jordan yet. He is currently matched up with Trey King on the near side of the field. Second and 10 from the 35, handoff to Cormier, and Cormier has a hole, puts his shoulder down, ball is loose. Who came up with it? Trey King says Trinity. Quinn McDermott believes it is as well. 
Now we had a similar situation in San Antonio last week. Takes the referees a second to get in there and they haven't signaled yet. But it depends on who comes out of this pile with the ball. Officials still talking about it. Trinity adamant it is theirs. Mary Harden Baylor might have been able to wrestle that one away in the pile, but Mac Douglas coming towards the Trinity sideline, convinced that it was his, and the referees will award it to Trinity. A huge play as Cormier burst through the middle, lowered his shoulder. It was a big collision. He looked to be running over one of those members of this Trinity secondary. I think it was Casey Hampton coming in and he didn't knock that ball loose. It was Ezra Gore from behind. Casey Hampton doing enough to knock Cormier off balance. You saw his arm swing out just a little bit, get away from his body. And Ezra Gore with a spectacular play coming in from behind to force a fumble and Trinity jumping on top of it. Ezra Gore, what else can you say? The senior from McKinney is everywhere. Now a handoff to Hutchison and Hutchison with the best run of the day for Trinity thus far. And maybe a little momentum swinging the way of the maroon and white. Uh, certainly the best run of the afternoon. Even then, some nice penetration from this Crusader defensive front. It was number 94 right there, Pete Smith, who got through. But trying to stay engaged was that Trinity offensive line. They did just enough to slow him up and allowed that nice eight-yard gain around that edge. Hutchison again. Moves forward, gets close to the marker. Will be a bit short on third down. We saw this on the first drive. Tigers going for it on fourth. We're stopped. I think right here, third and one. A couple of nice runs in a row. A great opportunity, especially after that switch in momentum to just establish this game on the ground. I know Mary Harden Baylor stacking the box, so we'll see if Trinity will run a run pass option, but instead it will be Hutchison, but he will be stopped short. Number 25 again, Duran Hill. Called his name several times. Leads the team with 95 tackles coming into today. And it looks like the Tigers are gonna make this decision in between quarters because the clock is ticking down below 10. And it'll be a fourth and one from the UMHB 39 yard line. Crusaders up seven to nothing in the first quarter from San Antonio. Already everything we could have hoped for, a close game that doesn't seem to be going in a route for either direction, expected to be tight throughout. And that Trinity rushing attack still in the negative. UMHB's defensive line helped by their linebackers has really been there. Yeah, and I think that negative on the screen because of the big loss on the sack that Tucker Horn took a couple of possessions ago, lost about 15 yards on that one. But this possession, a couple of nice runs, even the last one before Hutchison was stopped for no gain as we see the K.J. Miller touchdown reception again right there. Hutchison was able to get in the middle of the line of scrimmage, find a gap and fall forward for a couple of yards. And that's really what these Tigers are gonna need to do this afternoon. Take what they're given. Mention the fact that Tucker Horns found his receivers like Ryan Merrifield in some pockets and some zones for those five yard gains. It's really gonna take those players when they have the balls in their hands to make some big plays, make players miss and turn those five yard receptions into more like 15 or 20 yard runs. Back from the timeout, Tigers are going for it. Fourth and one from the 39. It's an option to Legend Grigsby. He receives the pitch and the Crusaders are there. Durand Hill again, not fooled at all by Trinity. And for the second time today, UMHB stops Trinity on fourth down. Yeah, and an interesting play call right there for the Tigers, something that we haven't seen this year, that option. Tucker Horn certainly has been more dangerous this campaign with his legs than we saw out of him last year as scrambled, but that time didn't really seem to threaten the defense. Stepped up right in between the tackles, 
I think those defensive linemen and those linebackers for Mary Harden Baylor read it right away that he wasn't the threat to run it, and they got to the outside really, really quickly in order to stop Trinity before they could pick up that fourth down. First time we've really seen the option from Trinity, and now Kyle King, a play action all day to throw, directing traffic, chased by Agumaru, finally gets rid of it incomplete. But King has not faced very much pressure. Agumaru giving him a few words at the end of that play. Second and 10 coming up for the Crusaders. Yeah, and Kyle King has either had a pretty clean pocket to throw from or recognizes that his options aren't there right away and gets outside of the pocket to extend plays. But these receivers have been really stuck with these defensive backs. We'll see another handoff right here. And a nice job from Afonso Thomas, who breaks through that initial line, falls forward for about a gain of eight as he leapt towards the line at the very end. So it'll be another third down for Mary Harden Baylor, but a much more manageable one this time, about two yards from the sticks. We've become so used to all year when we see a running back face at Trinity Scrum, they kind of just disappear and fall. But today, UMHB able to burst through some holes and bring up Big runs, the handoff to Cormier. This time he is stopped and it's gonna be short of the yard to gain. The line judge coming in and signaling that it is just a bit short. But it's at the point in the field and with this type of game that would not be shocked to see UMHB going for it. And they are set up to do just that. So Kyle King joined by Cormier Make it Thomas there on fourth and one. And Thomas does get the handoff. Looked like he had it initially. And as soon as Thomas got the ball right there, he accelerated straight into the line of scrimmage. Again, ton of experience on this offense for Mary Harden Baylor, both at the quarterback and running back position. These two guys in their second years, as starters in their respective roles. I think Thomas doing a great job just recognizing he had to get to the line to gain and not much more. And that's all he was trying for right there. Next play is a short pass to KJ Miller. Gains about six. But the difference so far in this game, Trinity unable to convert on a couple of fourth downs on the other end, UMHB. Keeping their offense alive. They enter Trinity territory with that last pass, a play action again to Miller, and again, some positive yardage. Brought down by King, help from Douglas, but not before a Crusader first down. Again, on the top of your screen, Brandon Jordan matched up against Trey King. You can see the size difference right there. Jordan doing a great job of sealing the cornerback, giving KJ Miller a lot of room to operate with. He makes a couple guys miss to pick up that first down, but a lot of members on this Crusader roster just illustrating that they're gonna be very difficult to bring down this afternoon. King with more time to throw, going deep for Jordan, and Jordan hauls it in over the top of King, and the Crusaders enter the red zone once again, thanks to big number 21. You can just see his outstretched hands at 6'6 frame, 240. And we'll get a great look at it on this replay. And he might not have electric quickness, but when you're 6'6 and you have legs as long as Jordan's, once you get going, you can really pick up speed. And he just dragged across the field right there as we see Thomas take the handoff and he'll get into the end zone, but there is a flag down on the field. It looks actually like the referee is going to mark him down just shy, but we're going to wait and see what this penalty is. It looks like Mary Harden Baylor will trek back just a little bit. So it looked like it was a hold on the offensive line. Mary Harden Baylor was in a first and goal situation there from the five. So now they'll have that same situation first and goal this time from the 15 without the ability to pick up the first down. UMHB trying to catch Trinity on its heels there going quickly and maybe costing them the offensive line not quite ready and getting that holding called. 
It'll be another run to Thomas, and Thomas this time wrapped up. Harmel, the first one there. A gunner in there as well, and a UMHB player, slow to get up. Now he is up on his own power. Good to see there from Ethan Ruckman, the ASC Offensive Lineman of the Year. San Antonio native from right here, Johnson High School. Has been a key contributor and a key cog of that UMHB offensive line all year long. Certainly hope that he is okay. And Kyle King will come back out with his offense. Now have a second and 14 from the 14 off of that penalty when it was first and goal. You've got Afonso Thomas in the backfield, Jerry Day Jr. at the bottom of your screen, and then Brandon Jordan joined by KJ Miller in the slot. King looking left, looking to Jordan. Jordan in the end zone, too high even for Jordan. That time being defended by Malik Ross. We're going to continue to highlight the difference in size. Ross standing in at five foot eight, but he breaks across the field really, really well. You mentioned that one just too high for Jordan, who extends that arm of his 6'6 six frame. So now a third and long. And this Crusader offense operating from the middle of the field. Interesting to see what they opt to do here. We've got the same exact setup as the previous play. Jordan at the top, Miller in the slot. And Day at the bottom. Will Trinity send pressure? They do send some. Max Shillstone goes past King. King gets it and deflected, nearly intercepted by King. He is going to lay on his back wishing he was there. But Quinn McDermott at the right place to knock that pass loose. And it'll bring out the kicking unit for the Crusaders. Outside of that one completion to Jordan on this drive to get the Crusaders down into the red zone, the coverage in the secondary has been superb. The Crusaders team, they've completed a couple of passes to the outside on those little screen routes. Jordan's used his size to block those up nicely. But those options downfield haven't been readily available. And it's a really nice stand from this Trinity offense, excuse me, this Trinity defense to just allow three points right there. Absolutely, especially after it looked like they were waltzing into the end zone before that holding penalty could have easily been 14 to nothing. Instead, it is still a 10 to zero lead for UMHB thanks to the Anthony Avila field goal. The Crusader is really dominating this one so far, 132 yards of total offense. They're utilizing their weapons in the air, getting it to their big receiver, Jordan, on that last drive. We'll see what Trinity can do to respond. Coach Jeremy Urban, very excited about this matchup because he believes his Tigers have gone through it all. They've had overtime thrillers. They've had last second miracles. They've had come from behind wins at home and on the road. And so he believes the experiences that these Tigers have had allow them to be ready for anything. I think the one thing we knew coming into this afternoon, Brian, was that this Trinity offense was going to need some sort of a spark. Obviously, they were gonna to need to put points on the board if they wanted to win this game. But we haven't seen it from them so far this afternoon. Mary Harden Baylor doing a great job stopping the run game, and that's really closed off most of the other options for this Trinity offense. I wouldn't be shocked to see them take a deep shot just to try and get something going over the top. But again, we're going to see a return from the end zone. This time, it looks like Mary Harden Baylor has it blocked up much better. So Legend Brigsby, Brigsby gets Brigsby all the way around the opposite Perry side of the field the where he takes it out of bounds right around the 15. Mark Gutierrez. But this offense, in whatever capacity it is, whether it's flipping the field so the defense can play in Mary Harden Baylor's territory, some sort of home run play, getting points on the board, doing something to show some signs of life right here after they've failed to convert on a couple of fourth downs and really, really hurt themselves. Tucker Horn, four for eight for 23 yards. He was just named the SAA Offensive Player of the Year for the second straight season, and he pitches it to Winston Hutchison, and Hutchison 
get some room to roll past the marker for the first down. And a nice play right there, getting the ball outside of the tackles, letting Hutchison use his speed as quickly as possible. A couple times we've seen these running backs come across the face of the quarterback. Those plays were just too slow in development. And these defensive linemen, especially those guys in the interior, have gotten able or have been able to get upfield. Short screen to Cole Manego. Gets a decent game for the Tigers. Much more of what they want to do. Stay in system, stay in rhythm. Brings up a second and five. Cole Manego with that reception. Didn't have a reception a week ago against Harden Simmons. And not many Trinity receivers did, in fact. It was pretty much all Ryan Merrifield. Along with some other receptions sprinkled in here and there. But it was a ground game for the most part. Very wet. Trinity able to come out on top. Horn evades the pressure across the middle to Merrifield, and he comes up again with the first down. That Horn to Merrifield connection has been working all year long. It was great get off from Sante Parker at the bottom of the screen, working against John Hughes, who he's beat a couple of times. But Hughes stays in the play, pushes Parker just enough upfield that Tucker Horn can step up and deliver that throw. But the offense working much quicker here, trying to get the ball out quickly, let these receivers, let these running backs make plays with the ball in their hands. Handoff here, great patience shown by Carmouche, waiting at the line of scrimmage and choosing his moment to dive forward for a gain of four. Another nice chunk play, exactly what this offense needs to do. Stay ahead of the sticks, stay right at the sticks in worst case scenarios. But if you're picking up four yards of play, you're moving the ball downfield certainly and you have a good opportunity to at least put points on the board in some capacity. Three receivers lined up to Tucker Horn's left. What do the Tigers have lined up? It's a screen and batted away. Alert play defensively there by Johnny Smith Ryder, the sophomore from Fort Worth, Texas. Has had a remarkable year for UMHB. And that was a dangerous play because we'll get a look at the replay. BJ Stewart looked to have some blocks there and lots of room to work with as Monego and Merrifield were engaged with their blocks. So a good job by Johnny Smith Ryder to force this third down and six from the UMHB. 45, Tucker Horn now has three receivers to his right. Merrifield, the lone receiver, to his left. UMHB sending five. Horn steps up, but not before he's wrapped up. A whole host of Crusaders there. Omari Frazier and Santi Parker combining for that one. And once again, as soon as it looks like Trinity is gaining some steam offensively, the Crusaders come up big. You see Parker there with the initial wrap-up, and then Frazier helps him out by running into Horn. And Gaiman will come out to punt. Those two returners back once again. Let's see if Gaiman can get a little bit more air under this one and try and pin the Crusaders deep. He does put some more air underneath. Some co confusion there. It's Miller who ends up with it. Dangerous play there for UMHB. Going back to that last play on third down for this Trinity offense, it looks like Mary Harden-Baylor again brought pressure around that near side edge, that left edge of the Trinity offensive line. And what happened was Sante Parker chose to go inside of John Hughes that time, and Santi Bowman at that left guard position was just beat off the snap. Sante Parker getting in the backfield quickly and disrupting it. Tucker Horn was stepping up, but was wrapped up way too quickly to get anything done. But good signs of life from this Trinity offense, getting the ball out near midfield and flipping field position a little bit as Cormier takes that one around the left edge for a gain of about three or four. It'll be up to this Trinity defense to make that field position count. We've got big number 94, Amir Mustafa, back out there on the defensive line. Nice to see that after he came off with an injury. He's alongside Charles Gilbert and Harris Good. This defensive front for Trinity is 
been a bit of a game of musical chairs. Never know exactly who you'll see, but they have all worked out this year. Jordan, the intended target, goes up top, and he does hold on for the catch right alongside the Crusader sideline. King was there, McDermott trying to help, but a ball perfectly placed by King. And the Crusaders get out of the shadow of their own end zone now on their 34. And you mention it, a perfectly placed ball, a ton of cushion on that sideline still. Jordan knew he'd have the opportunity as we see a reverse here, but it's well covered by Trinity. KJ Miller trying to use his speed and athleticism to get over the top, but that one's only gonna go for a gain of about four. Saw Cormier take that ball towards the left end, pitch it back to his teammate. But it was nicely covered on this backside. Ezra Gore recognizing it really quickly and forcing KJ Miller to bubble out a little bit further than I'm sure that play was designed to. Still though, even on a play that Trinity covered well, Miller able to weave his way for five yards and keep his team in a good rhythm. Trinity sends for King, faces some pressure, Douglas wraps him up, and Harris good on the back end as well. First time this Trinity defense is able to bring Kyle King down. And after that big completion to Brandon Jordan on the far side of the field, I saw Amir Mustafa run off. King has had just a little bit too much time standing in the pocket. This time, it was Harris Good who got great push in the middle of that defensive line, forced King to try and step out. But it was Mac Douglas who had pushed up field, really boxed Kyle King in there, and they combined for the sack to set this offense behind the sticks. Now a third and 12. King steps back to pass, has time, goes to the middle, Miller cuts and will get the first down. Put a nice move on Ezra Gore. And KJ Miller showing up today for UMHB. He leads the program in career receptions over 200. And today he has a touchdown and on a third and 14 in their own territory comes through with the catch to keep the Crusaders alive. Yeah, just a great decision to stick his foot in the ground and cut that one back into the middle of the field. Ezra Gore wasn't too far off of him. He's playing on that outside hip, but just too nice of a cut right there. And he had plenty of room once he got back to the inside to pick up the first down. You're also able to see when King has enough time to work has been able to find those open receivers. On that sack though, Harris Good causing the pressure and forcing him to his right, feeling uncomfortable, and he eventually went down. So Trinity hoping to recreate more of that. They have Good still in there, have rotated in Munoz and Agumaru. Douglas currently standing, not down in his stance. Second and eight for Mary Harden Baylor. Another pass for King, has time. But Gore up and could have had it. Instead, just tips it down. And it brings up a third down and eight. And an injured Mary Harden Baylor player on the turf. We'll take a break, step away, hope he's okay. We'll be right back. Great to see Jesse Hope off on his own power, steps to the UMHB sideline. 
The junior from Huntsville, Texas, another key component of this offensive line. And as he steps off, UMHB with a third and eight. Trinity Faithful trying to make some noise, ringing their cowbells. The ball is right at the 50. That last third down, it looked like Trinity tried to run a stunt in the middle. Those guys just got caught in some traffic. They'll bring more pressure and they'll throw over the top of it. It's Cormier who's right around that first down marker. I think he's just gonna be a tad bit short, however. Both of those referees, those side judges will come up, raise their fists. And it looks like Mary Harden Baylor is gonna bring in some bigger boys, a couple of tight ends into the game. And they're gonna go for it on fourth down, I imagine. And King doing an excellent job getting it to the vacated spot as Rigor with the pressure off the edge. And it was Cormier filling that exact spot. The play clock down to seven here, some confusion for UMHB. And it looks like a timeout is on the way from head coach Larry Harmon. And it is, so UMHB will think things over here. The Crusaders with a 10-0 lead over the Trinity Tigers with 3.29 to go in this second quarter. The Trinity Tigers, champions of the Southern Athletic Association, coming into today at 11-0. Mary Harden Baylor, champions of the American Southwest Conference at 10-1. And, and head coach Larry Harmon talking to us this week, asked about what he saw as the turning point for his team. And he said, to start the year, they defeated a really talented Muhlenberg squad, and his team was feeling good, feeling confident. But in his opinion, too confident after that win, because that very next week, they went up to Wisconsin Whitewater, fell to the Warhawks, and he called that game a slice of humble pie and a much-needed wake-up call for his Crusaders. And not just the team, he admitted that he believed he made some critical coaching errors in that game. And this is his first year as head coach, spent 20 years as the defensive coordinator for Mary Harden Baylor under Pete Fredenberg. But now, what will he have drawn up? Fourth and one, Crusaders are deciding to go for it. Jordan at the top, Miller at the bottom. It is a handoff to Cormier, and Harris Good had him initially, but Cormier able to fight through. And depending on exactly where they put it, I think he may just have it. Trinity's coaches think he's short. Just another great push by Cormier. Still no signal. And we're gonna get a measurement. Let's take a look at this replay. It was Harris good. But then Cormier breaking through. Jacob Munoz fighting. And the line to gain right in between the 43 and the 44. And hard to tell from the replay, always difficult to tell with all the bodies in there. But it looked like Cormier was kind of right in the middle of those two hash marks. This a little bit of a generous spot, I would say, based on the video replay that we saw but it's going to be enough for the first down. And at this point in the game, that has really been the difference. Mary Harden Baylor has converted both of their attempts on fourth. Trinity 0 for two. Now with only 324 left here in the second quarter, Mary Harden Baylor in Trinity territory. And a fresh, fresh set of downs right here, an opportunity to put some more points on the board. So a huge, huge, scenario for this Trinity defense to keep them off, keep this at a 10-0 game, hopefully get the ball back in the hands of the offense. But Cal King going to have plenty of time here and air this one out deep. Going to fall incomplete, though, to KJ Miller, who was covered that time by Malik Ross, who comes up hobbling just a little bit, but will head back towards the line of scrimmage. Trinity's defense on the year so solid when it comes to stopping third downs. Opponents converting only 25% of their third downs. That is sixth best in the country. But when it comes to the fourth downs, they have given up over 52% of those conversions. And for Mary Harden Baylor on the other end, they've converted on over 65% of their fourth downs. And they are really coming through today. Been the difference in the game. Fake handoff out today. Nice defense by Trey King to wrap them up immediately. Another third down on the way for Mary Harden-Baylor. 
And a great job from King right there, breaking towards the ball. Day does a nice job of holding on to this one. Kyle King put it right into his gut, but King came in, raked down on it, tried to break it up, tried to at least dislodge it after the catch. But Day took that one to the ground, picks up a couple of yards, put them in a third and medium, a third and six situation right here. Fake handoff to Cormier. Jerry Day not looking. Trey King all over number 84. And what will the Crusaders do now? As you get a look at the replay. The target was Day again, but the timing just off. And King able to force two incompletions in a row. Hunting unit is on the field. King steps back to punt. And B.J. Stewart, the ever dangerous number one, has three punt returns for a touchdown on the year. Can he spark a moment here with 2.21 to go? The punt is off. It'll be a fair catch called by Stewart. Secures it. And instead of a big return, Trinity's offense takes the field with three timeouts in their pocket. 2.15 to go. And not only a big stop to keep the score at 10-0 and not get it even higher than that, but remember that UMHB will get the ball after the halftime break. And so that could have been a double dip scenario for the Crusaders. Instead, Trinity getting the offense back out there. Tucker Horn, six for 11 now with 48 yards. Those linebackers walked up. There's that huge gap right in the middle of the field. Instead, Horn will hand this one off. It's Justin Carmouche in the game, but still no room straight up the middle between the tackles. Maybe half a yard, a yard there on first down. But with these linebackers walked up, a great opportunity to just throw some balls over the middle of the field, try and get those receivers like B.J. Stewart and Ryan Merrifield to settle into that zone. Carmouche remains in the backfield, now steps to the other side of Tucker Horn. Horn gets it, gets it to B.J. Stewart, and he falls down after a gain of a few. Third and three with the clock still ticking, neither side using their timeouts. And a bit surprised to see that Mary Harden Baylor is not opting to use theirs. The success that they've had at stopping this Trinity offense on these third and fourth down scenarios, they would have the opportunity or could have had the opportunity to get the ball back with maybe a minute and a half or so left on the clock. Certainly when Trinity has three timeouts of their own, you're not worried about stopping the clock and letting the offense get into a rhythm. Third and three, off and running, Horn deep and not on the same page as his receiver, Cole Manego. Manego was expecting a shorter pass. He stopped, and that ball sailed way out of bounds. And so now Mary Harden Baylor doesn't have to use a timeout. They'll get the ball back with just over 40 seconds. They've got two timeouts to work with. And Jackson and Miller head back to receive. Got to be careful here, and they switch up spots there. Can't see it on that angle on the screen, but Jackson and Miller just ahead of the punt have switched sides maybe to try to trick Gaiman. It'll be Miller underneath it. Miller going backwards and wrapped up by Kennedy Stewart. And the best punt of the day so far from Eli Gaiman in a really huge spot, a high spiraling kick, allowed the coverage team to get downfield and forced the returner to head backwards, but even then there was absolutely nowhere to go. So now with 37 seconds left on the clock in the half, Mary Harden Baylor will start from their own 35. Still good field position with two timeouts on the board, but a great, great job from Eli Gaiman nonetheless, because last time he kicked from around that area of the field, Mary Harden Baylor started with it within the Trinity 40. Maybe they'll use his first play to judge what they'll do. It is a run to the right, swallowed up by the Trinity defensive line. And the first time we've seen Kenneth Miller Jr., the junior from Manor, Texas, 
It's been exclusively Cormier and Thomas. And Mary Harden Baylor will be content to let the clock run out as they head to the locker room. A standing ovation on the way from the Crusader faithful who have traveled down from Belton to see their Crusaders go up 10 to zero over the Trinity Tigers. They run off the field with support from their fans as well. Remember a week ago, Trinity trailed Harden Simmons at the half. They had no points and they came out firing thanks to Ryan Merrifield and company. So a 20 minute halftime on the way. You'll get a look at the only touchdown of the game so far. A Kyle King pass to KJ Miller. Quinn McDermott nearly there. Instead, it is number seven who comes up with it. So we'll take a halftime break, 20 minutes, go get some food, go get some drinks, go watch the start of Argentina versus Mexico. But don't go anywhere because what a second half we have in store, no doubt, from Tiger Network.
Welcome back to San Antonio, Texas, where we just have what is an unfairly beautiful day in the 60s. It is sunny, just a few clouds in the sky, and I know I've been enjoying this display from our drone during halftime and hope you have as well. And we are excited for what should be a great second half. Mary Harden Baylor up 10-0 over the host Trinity Tigers. And Luke so far been pretty much what we expected, a grinded out game in which every yard has to be earned. Yeah, absolutely right about that. You mentioned the beautiful weather, the shots that the drone has provided at halftime. And if you've been paying attention, you probably saw the American flag blowing hard in the wind. Wind has picked up here in San Antonio. So while it is beautiful and while I don't think either of these offenses have really been affected as Kyle King has been really spot on with his deliveries through the air and Tucker Horn hasn't had a ton of opportunities or time to throw the ball downfield. We see their numbers there. Kyle King with a great start to the afternoon. 22 passing attempts hooked up with K.J. Miller for the only touchdown of the afternoon. Tucker Horn has been kept in check, has been forced to check it down short of the sticks more often than not. Haven't really seen any attempts to take the top off the Crusader defense. But you're right. It's been a grind-it-out mentality on both sides. And so far, the story of the game has been that Crusader defensive line who has made the job incredibly, incredibly difficult on this Trinity offense. You can see on the screen, only five rushing yards in the half for Trinity. But I think in addition to that, one of the other biggest stories is fourth down conversions. Mary Harden Baylor went two for two in that first half. Trinity went 0 for two. And they were in good field position. It's the only reason that they had the guts to go for those, to put the offense out on the field, try and pick up a first down. So in the occasion where the script is flipped, maybe Trinity has one or two of those first downs converted. They could have put points on the board. Maybe you take some points off the board from Mary Harden Baylor, but here we are. We sit at 10 nothing with just under four minutes left until we get started in the second half when Mary Harden Baylor will receive the opening kick. They won the coin toss here on the road, opted to defer. So have the opportunity to add some more points to this lead. But so far this afternoon, the Trinity defense doing a really, really nice job as you see the Tigers making their way through the tunnel back onto the field. The Trinity Tigers got to host a playoff game last week for the first time since 2011. And now we're back here in San Antonio hosting multiple playoff games for the first time since 2002. And that is also the last time that the Tigers had won a playoff game before last week's victory over Harden Simmons. That 2002 year, a magical run for the Tigers going all the way to the Stag Bowl. But it had been two decades since the Tigers had pulled off a playoff win, and they were down 7 nothing at the break. Harden Simmons was dominating defensively. They were getting a good ground game going against the Trinity defense. And then the Trinity Tigers engineered a 19-play, over 9-minute drive and a lot of that was to Ryan Merrifield, who had zero receptions at the halftime break. And then he ended up with six receptions for over 100 yards. It'll be the defense out there first for Trinity, but they're hoping for that same type of start to just get their team going, get that momentum headed in their direction. It is just a 10-point game. UMHB also leaving some points out there. They had a first and goal from the five. A holding penalty then brought them backwards and forced them to kick a field goal rather than get those four more. And at the end of the day, both coaches saying whoever makes the mistakes will lose the game. In a game that is so tightly contested, such talent on both sides, who will come through and who will fold when the pressure gets to be too much? Don't think either team really is capable of folding. There is just too much talent. Head coach Jeremy Urban entering his ninth season this year, and it's been one of his best, named the Conference Coach of the Year for the third time in his career. And on the other end, Larry Harmon, in his first year as head coach up in Belton, also earning Coach of the Year honors. So you know that both of these teams are well-coached, well-prepared, and we've seen it on full display 
with that 10-0 UMHB lead. About a minute left before we get underway in the second half. And before we get kicked off here, already mentioned the Crusader offense will take the field first against this Trinity defense who took the ball away once in that first half, set the offense up in some pretty good field position. But the way this thing has gone to this point, I think it might take some more of that from this Trinity defense. We see the replay here. It was Kenneth Cormier up the middle, a nice gain, lowered his shoulder against Casey Hampton, ran him over, but lost his balance in the process, and Ezra Gore came in to punch it out. Mac Douglas jumped on top of it, and Trinity had it in Mary Harden Baylor territory. But so far, Kyle King has had a lot of time to throw. Trinity has pressured him a couple of times. He's been sacked once, but he hasn't really forced the ball anywhere on the field. We've seen great coverage in the back end from King and Ross. We're just going to see if they can take that up a notch, if McDermott or Casey Hampton can come over and help them out and Trinity can take away the ball in the secondary, if they can force another fumble to give the offense a short field and hopefully get on the board. Blake Lynn ready for kickoff in San Antonio. 30 minutes left to go to decide this one. It is off and Jackson there. Reverses course, chased by Cornette, finds room, breaks through, and he has room to work. Jackson past midfield. Jackson is going to head all the way to the end zone for the touchdown. What a start for the Crusaders, but a penalty flag at the 45. Will it be brought back for the moment? Matthew Jackson has a kickoff return for a touchdown. If it is brought back, it's a huge error from this Mary Harden Baylor special teams unit. Jackson was free on that right side of the field. He didn't really have anyone to beat with that block right there. And it is a block in the back against Mary Harden Baylor after Jackson was surely going to house this one. So they'll be set up at their own 40 instead of starting the second half with a touchdown. So an awful, awful break for Mary Harden Baylor and a really great one for Trinity who went that entire first half without seeing that big explosive play from Mary Harden Baylor. Matthew Jackson has done well to serve as the fill-in for K.J. Miller, who is being kicked away from, he is not getting those opportunities and nearly a game-changing play. Instead, UMHB will start at their own 40, 1444 after that first kickoff return. It's a fake handoff, screen out to Hamilton, and Hamilton is past the Tiger defense, and he's going to march into the end zone for a touchdown. Jamal Hamilton, the senior from Dallas, Texas. And it did not take long for this Crusader offense to make up for that mistake on special teams. We've seen Kyle King throw to the outside multiple times on these screen plays. And this one is just expertly blocked up on the outside. Ezra Gore had a nice beat on it. But again, you see Brandon Jordan make multiple blocks. First, he has... Malik Ross engaged, keeps Malik Ross sealed on the inside, and then he turns and knocks Casey Hampton onto the ground, absolutely opening up that play. What a spectacular job on the outside from Brandon Jordan in the blocking game. He hasn't been a number that we've called offensively a ton. He had one reception to get Mary Harden Baylor down into the red zone, but he has been a sure difference maker blocking on those screens so far this afternoon and very, very quickly, less than 30 seconds here in the second half. Mary Harden Baylor able to add a touchdown to the board and expand their lead to 17, nothing. You are spot on Luke. That blocking job by Brandon Jordan has to be commended. It was right there with Malik Ross. And as soon as he felt he was done with him, just threw Casey Hampton aside and paved the yellow brick road for the Crusaders. Not what the Tigers were hoping for to start this second half. But there is still an entire half of football left to be played. Trinity earlier in the year on the road, a big game that could have decided the conference in favor of center college. 
Center playing at home needed to win out to win the SAA. Tigers were down 14, but they came back and won that game. Running away, actually, in the second half. And it will take a similar type of effort here. Legend Grigsby receives the kickoff from Avila. And he's tripped up at the 20. Mary Hart and Baylor feeling really good about their chances right now. But can Tucker Horn and the Tiger offense change the swing? Yeah, and what a huge momentum swing for this Mary Harden Baylor side. Really kept in check in that first half. Coming into this game, though, they had scored 14 touchdowns from 40 plus yards. They get another one right there. They've just been absolutely phenomenal at hitting that home run play, and they get one to get on the board really quickly and expand their lead. As you mentioned, Tucker Horn going to have to answer. Sante Parker chasing him, and Horn able to spin out of it. But after a gain of just about three or four yards, he's laid out, and he's slow to get up. Omari Frazier with the big-time hit, and Tucker Horn slow to get up and holding his shoulder for the moment. He's looking towards the sideline. We'll get a look at the hit. Mari Frazier, the junior from Live Oak, Texas, which is right outside of San Antonio. And it looked like Horn was slowing up, getting ready to slide, but got stuck in the middle. Couldn't get down onto the ground, and Frazier took advantage to lay the hit on the quarterback. Horn right back to it, though, completes the pass and gets the first down. What a job for Tucker Horn. Carter Self makes the reception, and those chains move. Terrific job by Tucker Horn, who we've seen all year long. What looks to be a hit that could take him out of the game, at least for a couple of plays. Instead, he gets right back up, keeps going. And you can see the toughness of the senior from Graham, Texas, who has led these Trinity Tigers to consecutive undefeated regular seasons, consecutive playoff appearances, and now looking to advance to the third round. Another fake handoff. Horn looking deep, and he has no one there. That pass to the sideline, incomplete. That time we see Sante Parker trying to win on the near side against that left side of this Trinity offensive line. John Hughes struggled a little bit in that first half, but got some help from the running back. Now, as Tucker Horn threw that one away, with no one in the vicinity, we're going to see the referees drop the flag, and I think it'll be for an intentional grounding area, call right here. Grounding, offense, number five. So Trinity going to lose, lose the down. down. They're also going to be, be forced behind the sticks the right foul. here. So after a solid start to the first half, excuse me, to the second half, a couple of nice completions short from Tucker Horn. We see him throw that one away really, really quickly early on that play. Not a ton of pressure, but I think a broken play and just an unfortunate result for Trinity. Yeah, that absolutely looked like more of a miscommunication rather than throwing the ball away. But Horn dinged up on it anyway. Tiger sent back a few yards, second and about 15. It'll be another pass play. Horn steps up, goes to his left, takes off and runs with it. And gotta be careful, pushed out of bounds. Horn on the carry. Hill. But after that big hit, Certainly don't want to see Horn taking any more contact like that. But you know he is one to never give up. Gets up to a third and nine from the Trinity 39. It's a nice play from Durand Hill in that middle line linebacker position, though, in pursuit of Tucker Horn. Saw that play nearing the boundary. Smart of Hill to pull up. Just see Tucker Horn out. Doesn't want to get penalized there and give Trinity a first down on an unnecessary roughness call. Play clock at three, Horn gets it. Has more time to work with, fires it, and Ryan Merrifield is there for the completion. When in doubt, look for number 13. And you see when Ryan Merrifield gets open, and more importantly, when Tucker Horn has time to work with, he can find anyone. So can this offensive line give Horn the time necessary it's an offensive line that has also dealt with lots of changes throughout the year. You've got two first years starting there, Connor Keel and Kayla Bear, and Coach Jeremy Urban incredibly proud of how what he calls his young pups have done this year. And they're stepping up, but here the ball is lost. I think Horn got on top of it. As that handoff just not working out between him and Grigsby. 
And it looked like a run pass option right there. Horn not entirely sure whether he wanted to give it or keep it and just makes that one a little bit too difficult, reaching at the last moment, I think trying to give it to Grigsby. But you go back to that last throw, that strike on third down, one of the first times in a third and long situation that we saw Mary Harden Baylor opt not to bring pressure. You mentioned Tucker Horn, plenty of time, a clean pocket, and he delivered that strike to Ryan Merrifield, who got right to the sticks, understood what he needed for the first down. Horn, play action again. Manego has some room on the edge. Merrifield with a nice block and a late hit on the sideline. Kind of swung him around there, Manego. But the referees saying it was clean. Titus dunked there, the first name we first time we've called that name. Cornerback from Austin, Texas. And it moves the chains once again as the play action starting to work a little bit better for the Tigers. Let's take a look at this hit at the end. And it Nothing there, like yeah. Yeah, I'd agree with you. Just more violent on the initial look, I think, on the, the swinging of his head. But good tackle by Dunk, but still a first down for Trinity. Now into UMHB territory on the 38. Another play action horn looking left. Dumps it down to Carmouche. Carmouche along the sideline. Gets a nice gain of about five. So this Trinity offense doing a nice job responding so far. Yeah. A little bit surprised by Mary Harden Baylor in the way they've come out after going up 17 to nothing, really opting to go away from the pressure. And it's given Trinity the opportunity to sit back, specifically Tucker Horn, sit back in the pocket, deliver strikes to these open receivers. This offensive line doing a much better job in this second half to start with this first possession. Fake pitch, Horn looking wide open is Manego, and Manego's gonna run into the end zone for the touchdown. Beautifully designed play for the Tigers, and they are on the board. Yeah, absolutely gorgeous. Something that we saw in that first half was that little quick pitch from Horn to his running back, and Horn sells it, the defense bites. A couple of those members of that Crusader secondary are just frozen in their shoes where they stood. And Cole Manego was streaking down the sideline, did a good job to come back. So that ball is a little bit underthrown, secure the catch and then get into the end zone. A great, great answer from this Trinity offense who moved down the field incredibly quickly. About four and a half minutes exactly taken off the screen. You see the pitch right there. The cornerback breaks up to come make the tackle and Manego left wide open. Great, great play design. That one set up in the first half from that same play. Manego, Merrifield fired up and Trinity responds in a big, big way. These fans here in San Antonio, Bryan are up on their feet. The confetti is popping and really quickly we see that total yards mark for this Trinity offense double and what a, it's just about a heartbeat. And how many times have we highlighted it this season on Tiger Network, the wide receivers for Trinity, week in and week out, you never know who it will be. Cole Manego last week, zero receptions, has 20 receptions this year, but has not been that prominent of a receiver. But then in a playoff game, down 17, he comes up with a big time catch to put the Tigers right back in it. It's a Tiger receiver room that has been without Austin Burtness, the fifth year senior all year long. BJ Stewart has been in and out of the lineup. Caleb Crawford, the second most receptions on the team. He's not out there today, but the Trinity receiver is still finding a way to make it work. The confetti still in the air, the wind keeping it there for a while. And Trinity fans certainly hope that they'll have to use some more as the kick is off. Miller has it, look out. Tyson Cornett gets around him and he is fired up. Pumps up Cade Rapson who was there with him. And Trinity feeling a little bit better now after that long touchdown drive. Yeah, and I wondered how momentum, especially coming out in the second half, Crusaders able to get on the board quickly. A huge kick return that came off. Obviously hurts, but they got into the end zone in the next play. I figured that the defense would come out excited especially considering the way they played in the first half. But now, after that Trinity touchdown and a great stop there from the coverage unit, 
everything seems to have swung Trinity's way. The crowd is on their feet. It is loud here in San Antonio. And Kyle King's going to try and negate that and get these Crusaders back down the field quickly. Immediately fires the pass to his left. And a man down for the Trinity Tigers. Harris Good comes up a little bit slowly on this second and three. We'll step away briefly as he is helped out. Few people have battled injuries more than Harris Good, but he just continues to show the fight that he has, does not want to sit out. He heads to the sideline with some help, but wouldn't doubt to see him in a little bit. After that, a second and three, Kyle King on offense. Looking across the middle, Jordan there, King battling, but it is Jordan who comes up with the catch, and you can see all six foot six of him coming through at midfield. And this ball, just a perfect strike from Kyle King over the middle. Jordan doing a great job of using his body to box out Trey King right there, extends his arms away from his body so that he can high point it, keep it away from the Trinity cornerback. It's a great job, great response from this Crusader offense, very quickly moving it across midfield. It's another gain on the ground for Afonso Thomas, who picks up about three right there. The best we've seen Trinity's defense do against Jordan has been when Quinn McDermott or Casey Hampton can hover over to help from the safety position. But one-on-one, -on -one, Jordan is tough for anybody, especially at this level. It is a second and seven after a short run on first down. K.J. Miller called into motion. It is another handoff and a positive gain, but stopped after a couple of yards there, it is Thomas who got the carry. And it's a third and four. Halfway through this third quarter, what a start it was in this half. UMHB had a kickoff return that was a touchdown, then got called back. And they said, no problemo. We've got a response. They've got a touchdown down the sideline for Hamilton, but Trinity responded. Now can the defense step up? Third and four. On the way, Kyle King fakes the handoff, gets rid of it quickly. Jordan comes up with it. Stiff arms Malik Ross, and Ross is not gonna catch up. Brandon Jordan high steps it into the end zone for his 12th touchdown of the year. And it's been Brandon Jordan's half here in San Antonio. Despite the fact that Trinity was able to get on the board, he is almost solely responsible for both scores by this Crusader offense. The first one, a great blocking job where he knocks a couple of Trinity Tigers out of the way. That time on what is a short route, he breaks to the outside, uses his strength to fend off Malik Ross, who is in pretty good position and does the rest himself. So right after Trinity grabbed the momentum, two huge plays from Brandon Jordan. And the Crusaders pull ahead again by 17 points here in the third. Jordan cuts in, makes a catch, and then puts his arm on the helmet of Malik Ross and says, see you later. Brandon Jordan, Last week against Huntington became the all-time leader in Crusader history with 30 touchdown receptions on his career. A year ago, he had 17 in one season, also the single season record for Mary Harden Baylor. And you can see the type of impact that he has made for UMHB. Jordan, the transfer from Ventura College, a community college in California, as Jordan is a Santa Barbara native but in a battle between two Texas teams, it has been the California boy leading the way. 24 to seven for Mary Harden Baylor, halfway through the third quarter, and Avila gets set for yet another kickoff. And the wind, not playing as a friend for Avila. He's had to put it back on the tee a couple of times. Official comes out to help him. But Grigsby and Carmouche looking to 
spark a little something like they did in the first half. Carmouche averaging about 50 yards per return today. Let's see who gets it. It is Grigsby again. So they've started to kick away and kicking away from both of them here as we've got some altercations. Cannon Starkey wrapped up there with LaDamian Bailey on the return. Two teams that are highly motivated. A budding rivalry that has really been rekindled over the last couple of years. UMHB six and four all time against Trinity. Trinity won the first four matchups back in 1998, 99, 2001, and 2002. But ever since then, Mary Harden Baylor has had the best of the maroon and white, winning six in a row, and many of those in the postseason. What will Tucker Horn do here? Play action, looking deep, had Merrifield in his sights at first, now scrambling right, and he'll get a nice pickup of about four or five. And we've yet to see Trinity put the ball back on the ground here in the second half. Every single time, it's been Tucker Horn dropping back the pass. And even when he hasn't found someone or hasn't put the ball in the air, he's able to been, he's been able to extend plays with his legs. And now a couple of times, we've seen him pick up three or four yards with those scrambles around the outside. Interesting to see if Mary Harden Baylor continues to bring pressure here. Nice block on the outside by Cole Manego, who was able to spring BJ Stewart the first time we've called his name in a really meaningful way. Saw him record a reception in that first half, but he had to go to the ground to do so. That time getting around the outside and able to bring the ball out to the 45 yard line. So again, Trinity's offense with a nice response here, but Mary Harden Baylor still opting against bringing pressure. First and 10 from the Trinity 45. Another fake handoff, Horn has some good time. Carter Self had some room. Instead, it's Monego who hauls it in near the sideline. Great job by number three. We'll see the play fake here on the replay. Tucker Horn dragging. It looked like it was one of those linebackers. This time, number 28 playing from that weak side position, Johnny Smith Ryder, who was just shadowing Tucker Horn, trying to make sure that Horn couldn't scramble, get to the outside to pick up some yardage. And instead, Horn delivered a strike to Manego on that far side of the field. Second and two, play clock down to five. Play action once again. Pressure, but Horn gets around it, and was he brought down out of bounds ahead of the spot? We'll see where they put it. It's right along that marker at the UMHB 45, and referee says Trinity first down. So that time, even though Mary Harden Baylor is trying to watch Tucker Horn closely, he does a good job bowing this one just enough around that weak side defensive end. That's number 44 for the Crusaders, Trey Bellew Witcher, who's been absolutely astounding from that opposite defensive end possession position, excuse me. And this time, Trinity will put it on the ground. Winston Hutchison, excuse me, Legend Grigsby trying to keep the defense honest. John Hughes sealed well from that left tackle position and he was able to get forward for about six right there. Second down and two. The balance definitely starting to be there for Trinity and Tucker Horn catching fire 14 for 20 now with 154 yards and a touchdown. He has it from the UMHB 39, a second and four with three receivers and a running back by his side. Looking to Grigsby and goes up to get it. Puts his hands up and brings it down for the catch legend, Grigsby. The former wide receiver who has converted to a running back. We mention it so often because it is so impressive what he has done. Leads away with running backs for eight touchdowns. But when needed, he is called upon in the air and you see Horn trusting him on this second down. And Trinity will continue the drive. 430 left in the third quarter. Don't be fooled though, that's an incredibly difficult catch to make. Grigsby extending outside of his frame to haul that one in. And I think his experience as a wide receiver certainly helps him. 
as again we see Tucker Horn get rid of the ball quickly to the outside. B.J. Stewart turning up field quickly and able to pick up about six or seven. Horn had someone right in his face and dropped back to about midfield. A little bit shaken up perhaps, but will step back to the line of the scrimmage. Things certainly clicking for this Trinity offense now. Carmouche, the running back, Merrifield. Keep an eye on him at the top of your screen. Carmouche into motion. And it is Merrifield, and Merrifield brings it in for the catch. Don't say I didn't tell you. Ryan Merrifield with another catch that leads to a first down, and he is up to five receptions now. Tigers enter the red zone. Merrifield, the senior from Austin, Texas, the first team all-conference member led this season in receptions, yards, and touchdowns. Just an incredible year for Merrifield. He steps off the field for now. It's Manego at the top, Will Taylor at the bottom, and BJ Stewart in the slot. Play clock into single digits, but Horn gets it off. He's looking left, steps up, and takes off to run. And he looks confident. Nice block by Taylor. Gives him a little bit of room. And Tucker Horn, the mobile quarterback today. Yeah, and that last score for Trinity, it took a little bit of trickery. Saw that fake pitch, freeze the defense, and Colmenego was wide open. But it's been the story of the year. Can they finish in the red zone? The field shrinking right here on that last play. It caused Tucker Horn to step up and scramble because none of his receivers were open. See what this offense can do to try and combat that. Look to the top of the screen where again you have Ryan Merrifield in one-on-one -on -one coverage. See if he can create the separation. Play clock down to two. Horn looking that way. Merrifield goes up. Off his fingertips. Nearly had it. And he takes a step and a breath after that. You see right here, two Crusaders in the area, but Merrifield, had he brought it down, would have had a touchdown. Instead, an incomplete pass brings up a third and five. We've got Merrifield switching sides on the near side now. And Tucker Horn slowing things down a little bit, taking one more look to the sideline. We have BJ Stewart out there, along with Carter Self and Cole Manego. So the weapons are at Horn's disposal, who will it be? Play clock dwindling, but he gets it off, looks to the air, and Hutchison gets it. Hutchison passes the marker for the first down. That ball hung up there for a while, but it ends up in the hands of Winston Hutchison. I think that's the same issue that Tucker Horn ran into on that last throw to Merrifield, throwing off his back foot. The wind obviously playing a factor here in the second half. I think it was a reason it glanced off the hands. But right here, a great job of understanding it's a third and short, third and medium situation. You have an opportunity to get a new set of downs. But here, Harry Harden Baylor comes out stacking the box. Let's see if Trinity opts to do something else. Again, with the receiver split off in single coverage at the top of the screen. Watch out a possible pass to Grigsby. He's out to your right. Horn has to scramble, he steps up, flips it up, and he gets the touchdown to Matthew Kovacevic. But a flag is thrown, was he past the line of scrimmage? We will see for the moment. It is Kovacevic with the touchdown. Horn had taken off to run, and the officials are meeting. And Horn was falling forward, which is a really important part, but I think you see Kovacevic drop his head a tiny bit. That looks plenty behind the line of scrimmage, which is currently in between the three and the four. Seems to be right there. It's that hash in the middle of the field is where the ball is snapped from four point after opportunities. That's at the three yard line. So that referee on the far side of the field not making a call. He didn't throw the flag. It was the referee at the near side who was in better position. Really a play in between. Certainly a game of inches on that one. That will be taken off the board. Trinity will lose the down and be forced back about five yards. So now a second and goal opportunity 
but Trinity still within the 10 yard line of the Crusaders. Play clock down to one, Carmouche in motion, and before that play, it's gonna be a timeout for Trinity. That play clock a couple of times on this drive, dangerously close to zero, and this time Coach Urban steps in to stop things. But what a swing of emotions there. We'll take another look at it. Horn stepping up. He's run so much on this drive and then he just flips it up. There was no one around Kovacevic. Had an unfortunate break because the more we see it, the more I want to say he did cross that line of scrimmage. But with the space that Kovacevic had around him, you have to imagine that if Tucker Horn had let that go just a yard earlier, it still would have ended up in a touchdown. So a really unfortunate break for the offense, but still with an opportunity here in a second and goal scenario. But important that they did burn that timeout right there. So they'll be left with two the rest of the way as they try and battle back. Still down 17 here, trying to add points to the board. Out of the timeout, Brian Merrifield lined up by himself but he does have two Crusaders shadowing him, and then you've got a bunch formation at the top. Three Trinity receivers lined up in close proximity. Carmouche is the one in the backfield. What does Horn do out of this timeout? BJ Stewart called into motion, now reverses course right back to the slot. Horn looking right, looking to Stewart, and it falls incomplete. Horn had him, but Stewart just couldn't haul it in. Yeah, and hard to tell from this angle we're at. We'll see on the replay, but it looks like number four from that safety position, reading this one well, might have gotten a fingertip on that. Break up the concentration of BJ Stewart, but a great, great play either way. And Trinity will have to convert on third down if they want a touchdown. Third and goal from the six. Trinity has been oh so close to a touchdown a couple of times. Can they get it? Horn over the middle and not brought in for the catch. And Ryan Merrifield is pounding the sideline. He knew he had it, cannot believe it. And instead of seven, the Tigers will try for three. Let's take a look. Horn gets a good block on Parker and finds Merrifield all by himself. And so you have a reverse touchdown to Kovacevic. Stewart not being able to bring it in in the end zone and now Merrifield dropping that one. Missed opportunities for the Tiger offense, but can Blake Lynn put three on the board? It is up and it is through. Three points on the board for the Trinity Tigers. They make it a two possession game. They needed 17, so they needed to get the three at some point, but I'm sure they would have loved to have seven there. Yeah, and a little bit surprising to see Ryan Merrifield unable to drop that one in. Again, finding the soft spot in the zone, settling down into it. It's not very often that we see him drop the ball, especially when it's a strike like that from Tucker Horn. Appeared to put that one right in the gut of Merrifield over or past the outstretched arms of the defensive back. So you have to wonder if maybe a finger got on it, disrupted the con concentration just enough but a great great stand from the Crusaders right there not allowing the touchdown after it looked like Trinity was going to score it three times Blake Lynn, Blake Lynn makes the trek across the turf after hitting the field goal and readies his kickoff UMHB 24 Trinity 10 with 121 to go in the third quarter still lots of football left to play but can the Trinity defense step up here? Maybe a special teams play on the return. The kick from Lynn is off, and it'll be Miller to return it. Miller goes to his left, zigzagging across, gets to the 40, and dragged down from behind by Kennedy Stewart, or else he was gonna be off. This return game for University of Mary Harden Baylor much talked about going into the game and they have come through today. Whether it's Miller or Jackson, they've been split seconds away from taking it to the house. Now we talked about the win coming into the start of the second half. 
had some shots of it during halftime. It was blowing pretty true west to east, which is directly across the field. But if you're paying close attention, you can see some of the confetti on the field. It's starting to blow north and south, and it's been affecting these kickoffs. They hung up in the air, and this Crusader special teams unit has taken great advantage of that. As again, we see Brandon Jordan with a reception on the outside, using that big frame and stretching out to pick up another first down immediately for Mary Harden Baylor. Yeah, and the Tigers just have no answer for Brandon Jordan right now. Coach Larry Harmon saying, yes, of course he does have a big body, but he has great speed, great hand-eye coordination, and that's what helps make him, make him such a special receiver there on the outside. Look at that line, five catches, 131 yards, and a touchdown. And as we've highlighted throughout, a couple of big blocks on Mary Harden Baylor's scoring plays. So he is doing more than just receiving. A run here for Cormier. He is wrestled down by a gunrun after a gain of about four. You mentioned Jordan's speed though, and it was one of the things that surprised me on that last touchdown, the way that he was able to run away from this defense, specifically from Malik Ross, who was in good position, even though he had taken that stiff arm. It looked like Malik Ross lost his balance, came off the field after the play. And as I mentioned earlier this afternoon, he came up hobbling after one of those deep balls that fell incomplete. Now, as we enter the fourth quarter, Malik Ross is not on the field, replacing him at the quarter cornerback position is the first year Trey Green at, out of Broadview Heights in Ohio. So we'll see if Mary Harden Baylor identifies that and tries to take advantage of the matchup with the first year on the outside. And we'll see what happens at the end of this break, the third quarter has come to a close and we are headed to the fourth frame here in San Antonio. Mary Harden Baylor 24, Trinity 10 in this second round of the NCAA playoffs. Trinity pulling off their first win in the postseason last week, the first win in 20 years. And 20 years ago, they didn't stop after just one. They kept on going all the way to the championship but they are going up against a Mary Harden Baylor program that is one of the most premier in Division Three. They started playing football back in 1998 and it did not take them very long to become a powerhouse. They have won 18 straight American Southwest championships. They have been in the postseason 19 years in a row and they have not lost earlier than the second round since 2014. So it'll be a tough task. Are the Tigers up to it? It is a second and six from the Trinity 43. Kyle King fakes it over the middle. Dangerous pass and a big hit, knocks it loose. And incomplete is the call. What a hit there. We'll take a good look on the replay. That throw really floated and it allowed the Trinity defense to get there. It was Casey Hampton who knocked it loose. Will McClintock, the tight end, Pretty clearly incomplete from that replay. And the referees are now going to bring it back to the original line of scrimmage. It looked like the field ref playing closest to the end zone came in to try and mark that one as a completion. But the field judge and the line judge on the near side correctly identified it. You see him lose it. Tries to get it back in his grasp after it hits the ground while he's on the ground. So a third and six. If Trinity wants to pull it off, this is a moment to do it. From the 43, Kyle King readies his snap, gets it to go, Ezra Gore sends pressure. What's the play on the sideline? A reception and a first down. So Brandon Jordan yet again. Continuing to use his size to just box out these defensive backs. He does it again to Trey King as you see the replay on that last possession. That ball clearly hitting the ground. Clintock picking it up after the fact, trying to fool the referees. But Trey King, time and time again, has been in stellar position. Jordan just so experienced, understand his body so well, has just used it to his advantage all afternoon long. Mary Harden Baylor has another first down here. And Miller goes in motion, catches, catches the toss. But Caleb Harmel is there near the line of scrimmage. Yeah, 
And that's KJ Miller at his top speed right there. He comes in motion, catches that one, and tries to get around the edge. But you'll see Caleb Harmel with that white sleeve on, takes that block, which helps him maybe with a little bit of momentum to that far sideline. He gets to KJ Miller first, and the big, strong linebacker is able to do enough to bring him down. Second down and nine coming from the Trinity 34. You mentioned it. Heading into this fourth quarter, currently Trey Green matched up with Jordan. King looking that way. It is Jordan. True Green. Enough there to disrupt the pass because Jordan looked like he had it. Trey Green, the first year, stepping up. And a couple of times that we've seen Kyle King just overthrow his big wide receiver. That time, even though Jordan wasn't able to haul it in with one hand, he stopped it enough and it looked like he could have caught it on the rebound, but ultimately falls through his hands. Nice coverage from Green, who was right there step for step. But another third and long here for the Crusaders and all afternoon long, they have been great at getting right to the sticks. Third and nine, pressure, pocket collapses, and Gore is there. Almost had it. And Gore looking at his sideline saying, I nearly had six. Let's take a look. The pressure coming from all sides, Douglas and Agumaru forcing the throw. It was intended for Hamilton, and Gore gets his fingertips on it. He had a pick six earlier this year against Rhodes. But instead of six, it is the big stop that the Tigers needed. A fourth down coming, and Kyle King will step back from his quarterback position to punt it away. Hasn't done so in quite a while. B.J. Stewart has been kept quiet in the return game so far, and a fake here for Mary Harden Baylor. Trinity looks to be all over it. The Crusaders trying to catch Trinity napping, but the Tigers are wide awake. And I'm not sure who it was that took the snap right there. Looks like it was number 22, Montana Miller, a running back in the game, playing in that protection area on that punt unit. But he didn't really ever square up to throw this football. And I imagine that's the only option you have when you're in a fourth and about nine right there. A shocking, shocking play call from Mary Harden Baylor who has Kyle King, a tremendous punter, have the opportunity to pin Trinity back deep, especially when the wind is in their favor. Instead, Trinity going to take over in really good field position, having moved the ball right down the field a couple of times this afternoon. And they go to Winston Hutchison, has room to roam, gets on the sideline after a gain of nine. Three phases of the game. Every football coach talks about it, but this Trinity team takes it to heart. They say three units, one man. And that special teams unit coming through with they stop. Still 13 minutes left in this half. Trinity with two timeouts. And the way their offense has been rolling on the last couple of drives, they could get right back into it here. As the play clock goes down to 10, still some confusion, but Horn getting everything in order. Snap on the way, fakes the handoff, looking left, pumps, fires deep, B.J. Stewart across the middle, brings it in for the first down! B.J. Stewart in the middle of several goal jerseys, puts the Tigers in the red zone, and they are roaring back in the fourth quarter. Yeah, and a couple of times we've seen safeties for both of these squads be just inches short. This time it's Bowden who does just enough to contact B.J. Stewart, knocking him to the turf. That might save a touchdown for this Crusader defense, but what a strike from Tucker Horn, who threw a fake, again, freezing the defense just enough and throwing his guy open. But we'll have to see. So we see a flag fly, and it's right in that area where the offensive line typically gets called for holding. It's a running play that doesn't go very far as Trinity had just gotten into the red zone. This time, the umpire is going to take it the other way, however, for about five yards. Have to wonder down. what the call was there. Maybe 
on offsides on that Crusader defensive front. Yeah, absolutely. Trinity going quickly. They slowed it down a little bit once they got to the line of scrimmage, but causing enough chaos there for Mary Harden Baylor. We get a good look at it here. Mary Harden Baylor just trying to recover after that long throw. Didn't see a whole lot there on that look, but Tucker Horn seemed to sense it immediately. And so now a first and five for Trinity from UMHB's 13. He's back to pass, looking middle, Kovacevic, touchdown, Tigers! This time it counts for Kovacevic, and the Tigers are within one possession. And what a response in the second half from this Trinity offense. Mary Harden Baylor, after an absolutely dominant performance in the first, has had absolutely no answer. They did nice to slow the offense down on the other half of the field, forcing a field goal. But as you mentioned, Trinity was going to need it anyway. And with the extra point coming here, looks like that time it is through the uprights. Now Trinity down just one score. The confetti flying in the Alamo City as we take a look at the replay out of the hands of Horn quickly and Kovacevic takes the big hit from the safety and brings in just his second touchdown of the year. Matthew Kovacevic, the sophomore from Friendswood, Texas, plays that tight end position that doesn't see a whole lot of action in the air, more of a blocking role. Kovacevic just six catches for 70 yards this year. But in a playoff game against the defending national champions, it is a sophomore who comes through. And this Trinity faithful having a hard time wanting to sit down because Blake Lynn is ready to kick it off. And now Lynn will kick in the opposite direction to the south end zone. So we saw a couple times in the third quarter, big returns from this special teams unit out of Mary Harden Baylor. We'll have to see if Blake Lynn can put a little bit more behind this one, take that out of the equation and leave Mary Harden Baylor within their own 25 yard line. Some more switching right as the kick was off. And it'll be a flag as the kick sails out of bounds. So in an effort to try to get it away from Jackson and Miller, Lake Lynn will put Mary Harden Baylor at decent starting field position. But you have to believe this Trinity Biggie defense is feeling fired up. Mary Harden Baylor is like They've got the some new names in line. there, primarily Trey Green, number 16. The first year who is getting some playing time. Now they're headed to the sideline. Let's see. It looks like they'll make Trinity re-kick this one instead of assessing it. Mary Harden Baylor knows how big of a threat this return unit is. So instead of taking it at their own 35 yard line, they'll force Blake Lynn back five yards. He'll kick it from the 30 and they'll give the returners a chance to spark this game after they had to punt the ball away, opted not to and didn't convert when they went for it on that fake punt on fourth down. Really interesting. You've got to be careful what you wish for. Can certainly go one way for Mary Harden Baylor, but there's just so much chaos that occurs on a kick return that a big hit could lead to a turnover as well. The wind clearly not dying down at all in this fourth quarter. 11.34 to go in San Antonio. Mary Harden Baylor had jumped out to a 17 point lead, but that lead is down to seven. And Blake Lynn will re-kick You've got Jackson and Miller, as you see them right there at the bottom of your screen by the scoreboard. They're right behind each other and they switch right as the kick is off when deciding what way to go, trying to throw off the kicking team. So who will get it? Blake Lynn, a little squibber here, line drive and it's Miller and Miller bobbles it, but he collects it, bursts through the middle and he is brought down right ahead of the 40. He had a steam. They get three more yards than they would have had if they had taken the penalty. Nice job by Trinity's special teams unit to not lay down low. And an interesting decision from Blake Lynn right there. Not sure if he happened to miss hit it or not, but maybe 
playing in Trinity's favor a little bit. That low line drive kick gave the returner some issues. He bobbled it and it allowed Trinity to get down the field and cover that one better than they have previously this half. The handoff to Kenneth Miller isn't going anywhere. Matt Douglas among the Tigers there. Miller has not had his name called until this second half. He had 91 rushing yards a week ago, is second on the team with 533. But we've seen almost exclusively Thomas and Co Cormier. And we'll see if the Tiger defense utilizes the energy from the crowd. Second and 10 from the UMHB 39. King collects it, fakes it, and it's nowhere. Pass intended for Hamilton, it looked like, but it was sailed over, and it is third and 10. And a couple of times we've seen Kyle King get rid of the ball quickly, trying to hit these receivers short and let them make plays themselves. But a couple of times we've seen these receivers not be ready for it. It's incredibly, incredibly dangerous when no one gets a hand on the ball and you have safeties playing in the secondary ready. Tigers show pressure, trying to force a bad throw. In comes Hampton, nearly intercepted by Green. Tigers have been so close to getting one off of deflections, but it is a third down stop. And Agumaru among the Tigers pumping up the crowd because King will go back to punt. Yeah, and it was a kind of wobbly throw from King right there. KJ Miller skying to try and make the grab. Ultimately, the fact that it slid through his hands maybe playing in their favor. It gave Brandon Jordan a chance to catch it a little bit closer to the sticks, but it falls incomplete and King will punt it away. High punt, dive down in the wind. Stewart says to look out, tells his teammates not to touch it. Good decision there by he and the Tigers. It is ultimately down at the Trinity 35. But look what we have here, folks. With 10.34 to go, the Tigers with the ball with a chance to tie things up. Yeah, a ton of time left here in San Antonio. 10.34 on the clock in a one-score game. Both of these teams have a lot of timeouts left. Mary Harden Baylor, all three of theirs. Trinity down to just two. Horn now 21 completions on 30 attempts, 242 yards and two touchdowns. It's a handoff to start things off. It's been almost exclusively the air game that has resulted in this Tiger comeback. But wanting to keep the running backs involved a little bit, Carmouche, you see just four rushes for two yards, now a fifth attempt there. In the second half, it was so many throws before we saw an attempt on the ground that I think it's kept this Mary Harden Baylor defense very, very honest. They've stopped bringing pressure from those linebackers. And that time it opened up a little bit more space for a four yard gain. Second down and six, under 10 minutes, fake pass. Horn escapes the pressure and he has room to roam. Pass the first down marker and gets the first down. Durand Hill was chasing him down. Horn looks like he ran into someone on the sideline, took a big hit, hope she's okay. But in the process, Horn, who has looked very mobile today, getting away from the pressure and moving those chains for the Tigers. Tucker Horn, you won't see a ton of it in the box score because of the sacks that he's taken for negative yardage, but now up to nine yards on nine carries. He has gotten away when needed. First down from the 46. Three receivers, two horns right. Another fake to Carmouche, and the ball is loose. Mary Harden Baylor comes up with it. Santi Parker, the defensive player of the year, picks up the biggest fumble of the year. And now Mary Harden Baylor returns to bringing pressure in some of the biggest spots of the game. The last play, Tucker Horn was able to escape from it. This time, Justin Carmouche in protection, not able to recognize where the pressure's coming from. It was a clear lane 
The defender bearing down on the quarterback, Tucker Horn, with nowhere to go, tried stepping up, but the ball gets knocked out of his hands in the process. And now Mary Harden Baylor, with the momentum swung back in their favor, have the ball at the Trinity 40. King hands it off to Thomas. Thomas to his left, dragged down after a gain of just one, maybe two. It looks like it was Omari Frazier, the junior who we highlighted a little bit earlier from Live Oak, which is just outside the San Antonio city limits. Brought the pressure and forced Horn to move the ball to his other hand. And in the process, it came free and it was number 93 who picked it up. But a second and eight now for Mary Harden Baylor. The handoff again to Thomas. Thomas bursts through and he has a first down. Afonso Thomas has been quiet. But he speaks up here in the fourth quarter on a nine yard run. And a great run from Thomas right there. Again, this Trinity defensive front doing a lot to create traffic at the line of scrimmage. But Thomas showing his patience, finds a hole just big enough for him to squeeze through. Looked like those Trinity linebackers got sucked up into the mess at the line of scrimmage and it allowed Thomas some open running room when he got through the mess, was able to pick up the first down and now Mary Harden Baylor entering field goal territory. It's a handoff to the left, a stiff arm by Thomas. Eventually sent out of bounds by King, but he gained six yards on that carry. And Afonso Thomas, the leading rusher for the Crusaders all year long, now up over 30 yards on nine attempts. And it feels like a really long time since we called his name consistently. But maybe in the game plan for Mary Harden Baylor. Saw Thomas on the first couple of possessions. Cormier came out in that first half, got a couple of a couple of carries in a row, but Thomas looking really fresh here late in the second half. Miller came into motion, but it's a handoff to Thomas, gets forward for a gain of one. We had seen Miller take the toss off that same play, but Trinity staying home, staying with their assignments and bringing up a third down and three, clock hitting seven minutes in the fourth quarter. UMHB still up by seven as Kyle King glances over to his sideline. You see their conversions. 12 attempts on third down, just four conversions, but fourth down has been key. Will they need it? King calls it off, hands it to Thomas. Thomas in the middle of a bunch of bodies, and I don't think he got there. The spot looks short. And now it's decision time for Coach Harmon, and it looks like it's an easy one. Avila's going to come out to take this field goal from the middle of the field. He's going to kick it from about 41, 42 yards or so right here. Certainly within his range, excuse me, not 42 yards, going to be more about 37 yards. And certainly within his range, but we've already mentioned this afternoon the wind gusting from left to right. A little bit of movement there. Ball is low and it's no good. Trouble from the start there on the snap and Anthony Avila, one of the better kickers in Division Three, misses and it's still a one possession game. Yeah, and you mentioned the trouble with the snap. Gets down pretty good. Avila certainly aware of the wind this afternoon. He took a ton of kicks in the pregame, at least 20, trying to account for this wind. And that time, punches it a little bit too hard, trying to account for the wind and over adjusts in the opposite direction. You saw him in the warm ups. If he was missing, the ball was hanging in the air and getting pushed past that right upright. So instead, it's going to be a seven point game with 6.01 left, and Trinity will have the ball at their own 20. Tiger is still alive. Horn gets a block by his back, takes off, and big hit, shoulder lowered by number 13. 
Trinity crowd wants a flag, but that was just a clean hit by Omari Frazier. Horn slow to get up. Yeah, there was certainly. some contact there near the top of the head and shoulder area. Frazier certainly teeing off on Horn right there, but Horn was past the line of scrimmage. I'm not sure if he realized it as he kept his eyes downfield and at that point was just a runner. So Frazier a couple of times this afternoon has made the Tigers quarterback pay with those big hits, but Horn has to be co cognizant of where he is on the field. Already saw him throw the ball past the sticks once. Big time holding on to for Legend Grigsby. Still a wrestling match on the turf, but it appears that Grigsby does come up with it, and he does. The ball wobbling out of the hands of Horn, and then Grigsby, if he had let go of it, he had two linebackers waiting to gobble it up. But instead, it's a third and one clock under five minutes now from Trinity University. Play clock down to 10 as Horn collects his offense and tries to convert here, keep the drive alive. And a timeout on the way called by head coach Jeremy Urban. Yeah, having already burned one here in the second half, have to imagine that either Coach Urban saw something in the defense and wanted to change the call, or just understands the weight of this play right here. It's been a while since Trinity's been a, in a third and short situation against this Crusader defense. But the boys in gold and purple have been wonderful all afternoon in these short yardage scenarios. Trinity, more often than not, has opted to put it on the ground. And it's been a stout, stout defensive line for Mary Harden Baylor that's been up to the job. They've brought those linebackers as well. So we'll have to see if they show pressure here. How does Trinity counter that? So frequently do we see Tucker Horn dump the ball off to his running backs out of the backfield. So wouldn't be surprised if those linebackers trigger just getting the ball into the hands of your running back quickly and letting them pick up the first down. Out of the timeout, 4.31 left, third and one for the Trinity Tigers from the Crusaders 29. It's a pass, throw, Stewart, first down. B.J. Stewart, the sophomore from Louisiana, has had a magical year. Special teams as a receiver, it doesn't matter. Number one has come through. I'm a little bit surprised to see how far off members of the secondary these linebackers were playing on that third and short, especially when you are bringing extra men in the blitz. You just disrupt that get off these receivers. You might have an opportunity to get the horn instead. Trinity with a first down. They go back to the run game, a gain of two. Nothing fancy, but a modest gain to keep the sticks moving. It was Justin Carmouche who got the carry. Carter Self and Baylor Jordan check out. BJ Stewart right back in there. And you have Manego as well as Ryan Merrifield, your principal weapons. Kovacevic in there at tight end, and Karmouche two horns right. The clock down to 3.30. With it continuing to click, where Trinity's at on the field, have to imagine that they're thinking touchdown on this possession and trying to force this one into overtime. As Horn, Horn takes looking a... deep. Stewart has it, and he had a step. He had a step. But the throw just over the top. Yeah, not very frequently have we seen this offense take the deep shot this afternoon. B.J. Stewart had his number called. As you mentioned, he had his man beat. And it was just a little bit too far. B.J. Stewart only about 5'7". And definitely the wind playing an impact there. And Stewart was well past the defensive back and the safety, but now a third and eight from the 40. Horn communicating with his receivers. Play clock down to zero. He gets it off. Looking right. Hutchison make it. Carmouche has the reception. 
And Carmouche gets the first down. Very alert play by the Tigers and Horn to get that one off. See on the replay here, Durand Hill in pursuit from his middle linebacker position. He's running all the way, but Carmouche doing a nice job of understanding the down and distance, understand where he needs to get for that first down conversion. And he gets just inches past the mark. First and 10 from the Trinity 49, trying to cross into Crusader territory. Horn back to pass again. Fakes right, now looks left, now just looking to survive. Has room across the middle. Gets down after getting a first down. Tucker Horn showing some agility today. And the chains keep on moving into UMHB territory. Horn has not been a runner this year. Just 80 rushing yards and a single rushing touchdown. But with this UMHB team sending pressure, he's been able to get past it, go through it, and get those extra yards when needed. As the clock ticks down near two, play clock at 10. And Horn calls it up, looking to Merrifield. Now tries to step up again, but this time wrapped up by the crew. What should go down as a sack right there won't hurt the Tigers too much as Horn loses just about a yard. And more importantly, wraps up the football as he's being brought down to ensure that Trinity remains in possession. But Trinity still taking a lot of time off the clock here. It is touchdown or bust. And watch out for Carter Self. He was the miracle man early this year. Instead, it's intended for Manego and Manego kind of wiggles his way across the middle of the field, makes the third down more manageable. Fifth catch of the day for Manego. And like you said, Luke, the clock is ticking. Tigers looking patient, looking calm, not in a panic, even though their season winding down to its final minute. It is third down and four from the Mary Harden Baylor 33. You've got Merrifield. At the bottom of your screen, Manego, and now Stewart heads into motion to join Merrifield. Horn steps back out to Hutchison. Hutchison can't corral it. The ball was tipped at the line, and fourth down coming for the Tigers. Yeah, and a great, great play on the defensive line there for Mary Harden Baylor. You see Tucker Horn giving the defender props. That one's tipped into the air ultimately might work in Trinity's favor right here that Winston Hutchison doesn't catch this one trying to come back to it there were members of that Crusader defense that were swarming to the football so clock would have continued to run it still would have been fourth down instead Trinity the fourth down and the season will come down to this fourth and four from the 33 horn looking to Carmouche Carmouche drives for the first down 43 seconds left on the clock and Tucker Horn goes to his trusted running back Horn approaching 300 yards on the day Carmouche who missed so much of last season last season with an ankle injury coming through clock ticking down to 30 Horn has his play ready to go he's back escapes but dragged down by his foot and Horn slow to get up after Pete Smith dragged him down and sends him way back to the 40. Trinity uses their final timeout. Yeah, multiple times this afternoon have we seen Tucker Horn get turned around like this, trying to scramble and get out of pressure. But more often than not, when he turns, there has been a Crusader defender right in his face, just at an absolutely tough break to take the sack right there it forces Trinity about 15 yards behind the sticks back out around the 40 yard line only 22 seconds left on the clock and after that one they had to burn that final time out so it gets really really difficult here you need 26 yards to pick up the first down and to stop the clock if you're in play you can't really afford to throw anything over the middle of the field now so it narrows your options a ton to the outside or deep. 
Obviously, they need to get into the end zone if they want to tie things up here. So we'll see what they have in the playbook. And on that final play before the timeout, Parker and Smith causing pressure, but it was Tristan Green who eventually brought down Horn by his ankle. So second and 26 with 22 seconds left. Tiger is down a touchdown in UMHB territory. What will it be? Horn steps up, looking deep across the middle, and a late hit on Kovacevic, but no penalty marker there. As the safety just making sure Kovacevic didn't haul it in, he had it in his hands. It doesn't look like Kovacevic is the intended receiver right here. Horn trying to hit Merrifield over the middle. That one tipped almost into the hands of the Tigers tight end who would have had enough for the first down. But only five seconds coming off the clock right there for Trinity, but the play clock now clicking down to 10 seconds. It is ticking and there is no way to stop it. Third and 26. You've got three receivers out there, Merrifield, Stewart, and Manego. Kovacevic out there, Horn trying to find someone. Can't load up to pass, he's brought down from behind. The sack puts him down and that is gonna be the ball game. Triple zeros in San Antonio and the Crusaders of Mary Harden Baylor are moving on to the quarterfinals. And what heartbreak for the Trinity Tigers, but when it came down to it the most, the group that made the difference in the first half, this defensive line played their hearts out. The final seconds of this game, you mentioned Green getting home to sack Tucker Horn for a huge loss and to end the game right there. Another huge play in pursuit. Tucker Horn remains distraught, crouching down, hands over his head after that one, but consoled by his teammates. After a remarkable effort, the University of Mary Harden Baylor escaping San Antonio with a 24 to 17 win, 366 yards of total offense. They were pretty quiet after halfway through the third quarter and into the fourth, this Trinity defense stepping up, the offense getting on a roll late, but it was not enough. The first loss for the Tigers is what knocks them out of the season. What an outstanding job in this second half though. Coming out, putting up 17 points on the board when in that first half, you could barely manage to get 17 yards. It was a struggle offensively and Tucker Horn completely turned the ship around. Offense couldn't get anything going on the ground, but Horn took it upon himself to put the ball in the air, hit his receivers. It started to open up the game. And before we knew it, Trinity had brought this one within one score and had an opportunity down the stretch to win it. But Mary Harden Baylor showing that they've been here before, showing why that they're the reigning national champs and getting the job done when it mattered the most on the road. The Tigers will line up for the alma mater, so we'll let you hear it. We'll come back for a wrap up after this. Confetti still flying as this crowd applauds the Trinity Tigers for a fantastic season that will end up at 11 and one with the sole loss coming here in the second round of the playoffs to Mary Harden Baylor. Meanwhile, for the Crusaders, their season continues. They will play the winner of Bethel and Linfield and it looks like Bethel is up seven to three over Linfield. 
So Crusader fans, you never know, you might end up hosting a third round playoff game up in Belton. What a game, Luke. What a game. And just a shame that it'll always seemingly come down to Mary Harden, Baylor, Trinity, and Harden Simmons before these teams can ever face anybody else. Yeah, this was a national championship caliber game. I think we saw the same thing last year. You talked previously this afternoon about Mary Harden Baylor's average margin of victory in the playoffs last year. The fact that Trinity played them closer than anybody in the round of 32. It's a shame that one of these two teams had to go home this afternoon. It was the same case last week when Harden Simmons got sent home, a top 10 team in their own right. But that just speaks volumes about the talent and the quality of football that's being played in the state of Texas. Unfortunately, it's not going to change anytime soon. But we're seeing programs like Trinity starting to catch up. Last year, a 10-point loss, only able to put up three points on the board. This year, in the second half, completely turned things around, flipped this game on its head, and gave Mary Harden Baylor a run for everything that they had, and she came just short. As you look around the country, you see several games completely out of hand, some blowouts across Division Three. but we knew going in that no matter who won it, it was going to be close. And I bet that any of these two teams would put up a pretty good battle with anybody else in Division Three. But like we're talking about, just a sad fact and a sad reality that Texas eliminates itself. And after today, Mary Harden Baylor, the undisputed king of Texas, they beat Harden Simmons earlier in the year, and now they beat Trinity to move on. What a ride it's been this season and over the last couple of years calling Tiger football here on Tiger Network. It's been so much fun and happy to be right alongside you for everything, Luke. Your commentary and your analysis has been spot on from the start, and it's been a real pleasure to join you on Tiger Network. Brian, being around you, seeing your passion for this team, your dedication to this job, the responsibility that comes with it, the research that you do, you've gone above and beyond in your tenure with this team, the relationship that you've been able to create with this coaching staff, with all of the opposing, opposing coaching staff have been just incredible to watch. Thank you, Luke. And thank you, fans, truly, for joining us for the ride. It's been fun. And one last time from San Antonio, Trinity football down to Mary Harden Baylor. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.